Kind of the game plan here early of trying to go after the uh, secondary and the corners and the safeties and challenging this week for us to pass defense. Well, that was one of the things the coaching staff talked to us about as well. They, they felt like they had a matchup advantage on the outside with their receivers. Not only Douglas, but with their other receivers. Another fake. Salter still has it in trouble and is tripped up and taken down. Malik Mustafa makes the play for Wake Forest. Fourth down, Liberty. And he plays just like the coaching staff described, hard and fast. You see Caden Salter. He escapes the pocket. He's done a good job of that, avoiding the defense. But you see the speed of Mustafa to get to the outside and get him before he's able to plant that foot and get north and south. Yeah, they told us that. He has flashes of brilliance of being able to go side to side throughout the field and also spying on the quarterback. You saw it. That was his responsibility, and he was all over it. And one of the things you've got to do, you cannot give up that edge if you're the defense. If Salter's able to plant that foot and get north and south, he's going to get positive yards because of his speed to get to the outside. So a great job by Mustafa to get out there and make that tackle. Another flag down here. Adam Savoy, our referee tonight, very busy. Just two and a half minutes in. That opening drive aided by a couple of pass interference penalties or a pass interference and a hold. And now what do we have here? Substitution. Receiving team, 12 players on the field. Five-yard penalty, replay fourth down. And I think right now you go for it. Why not? You came here to win a football game. You're in their territory. You know, you've got fourth and short now. You've got to take this opportunity to go for it. Your, your offense has been moving the football effectively. So I totally I agree. It. Yeah, it's fourth and two. Ball's at the 41. Kind of takes away that. Outstanding play by Mustafa to push him back deep. So they get the five yards, and you're absolutely right for us going for it. Caden Salter back on the field, and why not? Shedra Lewis is in the backfield. Wide receiver split. Salter, he's going to be taken down. Wake Forest is all over it. Ja'Cory Johns makes the play, and the Demon Deacons take over on downs. And the way that you affect speed is you bring more than they can block. And you saw that play. Wake Forest brought more defenders than Liberty could block. They did not allow Salter to get into what he wanted to do. He wanted to get to the outside. But you see a poor job by the offensive lineman, number 73, Gatlin. You've got to stay connected to the defender. We talked to defensive coordinator Brad Lambert yesterday for Wake Forest. And the two top guys that you have to be all over, obviously the quarterback, Caden Salter, and number three, Demario Douglas. So you saw it in the last couple of plays there for Wake Forest going out and getting on Salter for some big tackles for loss. This pass goes out to Taylor Marin on the completion from Sam Hartman as Wake Forest is on offense for the first time now here as we played three minutes in the first quarter. And now the question will be, can Liberty get enough pressure on Hartman to, to bother him? And Wake Forest moves quickly here. Justin Ellison is the running back. You're going to see tempo a lot here today in this game. Second down and six. Ellison. And tackled down from behind. Nice play. Jawan Treadwell makes the play for the Flames. And watch the nickel. Watch Treadwell. You see you've got great blocking. But once again, Treadwell is coming from the outside. And that's what you have to do. When you bring your nickel back up to blitz or get in that run game, he's got to be able to make those plays. Hartman gets it to the outside. Catches made. Donovan Green, first down. Gain of 14. And a good job by the offensive line to give Hartman the time that he needs to get the ball down the field. First down, Hartman stepping up in the pocket. The pass is off of his intended target. Green again, incomplete. And one of the things, when you watch this offensive line for Wake Forest, they do a really good job of selling the run. Mm -hmm. They sit down in their hips. They duck walk. They get their feet chopping. So as a linebacker at the second level of the defense, you're watching that movement, and you're reacting to that. Hartman's pass caught by the tight end, Blake Whitehart. But again, smelled out nicely by the Flames defensively with Chris Megason and again Treadwell. Third down. Whitehart, one of the captains. 
So the touchdown catch so far this season. Right back to work, though, quickly here on third down. Hartman rolling in the traffic. Catch is made. Green's got it again. First down at the 15-yard line. And you talk about a confident quarterback. You throw into coverage. There were four defenders around the receiver. But you watch Hartman. He escapes the pocket. He gets to the outside. He sees some, something that he likes, and he delivers a strike down the field to his receiver, Green. Now it's Ellison. And a short pickup on first down. Ahmad Walker there for the play for Liberty to stuff him up. And I think what's interesting, early in this ball game, the defensive line for Liberty has held their own against one of the better offensive lines mm -hmm. that I've seen in college football this year. Well, and they got to be aware that it's going to move fast here, right? I mean, this tempo from Wake Forest, Hartman driven back, the ball at dead. That's Mike Smith, Jr. And once again, the defensive line, they're getting contact first. The first to make contact usually wins. Look at the offensive lineman. You see guys standing up. They're not playing with low shoulder pads. They're not playing with flat backs. And that is what happens when a defense is firing off the ball against an offensive line that's playing high. Third down here. Hartman in the end zone. And incomplete. He had Whitehart, the tight end. He wanted Green again, who's been... Targeted heavily on this drive, number 11 for the Demon Deacons, but it's fourth down and the field goal unit comes on. And that was a bad decision by Hartman because he threw into coverage. There was coverage. Mm -hmm. that, that receiver was bracketed. They had safety help over the top. They had a defensive back underneath. I thought that was a bad decision by Hartman. He got away with one right there. We'll do it next time. You got Matthew Dennis coming on now. He's four for four on the season for field goals along at 33. And that's what this one's going to be here. 33-yard attempt as Jacob Zur snaps. Zach Murphy holds, and the kick is through. So Wake Forest on their opening drive of the game. First quarter back to Winston-Salem after this. Bryce, they let you off campus. Let's go to our Because you know when I was the first ever sophomore to win the high school. What's up, Bryce? Go, 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 go. What's going on here? Oh, just a little friendly competition, you know. That's cute, Derek, but the competition was reps. Just can't read this guy. Hey, oh, no. For your destiny! Your morning Egg McMuffin can earn you a free afternoon Big Mac. Because every one of your orders earns points you can redeem for free McDonald's when you order with the McDonald's app. Download the app today to start earning free McDonald's. Start playing and never stop playing. You get the most from the game when you're having fun. service. Steve and Anna have Spectrum Mobile. Both couples have two lines and both get unlimited data and nationwide 5G. What's the difference? John and Kelly pay a lot more with AT&T. Yeah, and our bill just went up. Again. AT&T's costs are rising up to $12 a month for older family plans. That's too much. Oh, way too much. Plus taxes. And fees. With Spectrum, there are no added taxes or fees. Go to SpectrumMobile.com slash save to see how much you can save by switching to Spectrum. Steve and Anna save hundreds of dollars a year with Spectrum. Really? Yes. And with Spectrum Mobile, you get the most reliable service coast to coast and the speed you need to stream and connect in more places. So, John and Kelly, do you want to save more? Oh, yeah, we are switching to Spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Switch and you could save up to 60% on your mobile bill. Call, click, or visit a store today. Wake Forest on top, 3-0 after the 33-yard field goal from Matthew Dennis. First quarter today, the scoring drive, first of the game for the Demon Deacons. Your assessment? Well, you know, they moved the ball. Moving at the point of attack from the offensive line perspective, it's going to be interesting to see how that works its way out because I think this is one of the better offensive lines, but when you look at what Liberty was able to do, they got pushed at the point of attack, and they played with a lower 
flat back, and they played with bent knees, something we did not see from the Wake Forest offensive line in that first drive. Coming up after us, we cap off the night tonight with number five, Clemson, hosting Louisiana Tech in Death Valley. Dabo said need to be a little bit better on defense, give up 384 yards to Furman last week. Well, that's an interesting game. And with Clemson, I think the dynamic that people will continue to look at is DJ Ui Angalele versus Klubnik. Who's going to be the guy moving forward? Because Dabo Sweeney's trying to get back to the playoffs. You know, he, he missed being there last year. You can see it in an intensity with every conversation that you have with him. He and I were talking before the game after this week. Clemson comes to town. They'll be here at Wake Forest next Saturday. And that's something that Wake Forest needs to be careful of. You can't look ahead to that big game. You've got to play this game and play to win this football game because you've got a hungry Liberty team that understands this is an opportunity for them to get recognized and be one of those teams that is being talked about like a Georgia Southern or like a Marshall. Illegal shift, offense, two players moving and never reset prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty, first down. Pass went off the hands of Noah Frith, but you heard the penalty, so backed up five, and we've seen a lot Correction. of penalties so far in this Forest first quarter. Elected to decline the penalty, second down. All right, so decline, second and ten. You can see the mobility, though, of Caden Salter and what he can do, but that speed from the Wake Forest defense has brought him down for losses twice already back on that first drive. Well, they've done a good job with containment, keeping the edge, holding the edge, and that is something that they will have to continue to do throughout this ball game. Salter drops back. Rowing, throwing on the run. Wants Caleb Sneed. Overthrown and off the mark and complete. No flags this time. And defending on the play was A.J. Williams, the sophomore safety. Remember that opening drive was aided by those two penalties by Wake Forest defense. And Sneed had an opening. He just tripped up at the end of that route, at the top of that route. But something interesting on that play to me is Caden Salter. You know, the coaching staff talked about him running the football mm -hmm. last weekend, not being happy that he didn't go through his progressions. I thought on that play he had an opportunity to get about 20 to 25 yards running the football because nobody was in front of him. Well, here he is now. Rushing's got to get to the 35-yard line. He does. First down on the run from Caden Salter, and the drive will continue. And you see right there they gave up the edge trying to make the big play. You cannot play hero ball. You've got to keep contained when you've got a quarterback like Salter that has the speed not only to get to the outside but to get up the field. You face quarterbacks that have escapability and quarterbacks that have first down ability, but you have quarterbacks that have touchdown ability. And that's what Salter has with that speed to the outside. Salter 6'1", 190 out of Cedar Hill, Texas. Transfer out of Tennessee. He knows he's got to put on a little bit more size. Coaches have said they're very very impressed by him being a no excuse maker out there and you know he knew he had to come in here and earn this job and although he didn't get it initially now he's going to be the guy for a few weeks at least anyway pass overthrown for Douglas he saw him pack that ball but he saw the defensive back coming from the opposite side of the field I think he did a good job of throwing that up high where only his receiver could possibly make a play on it you don't want to put that ball in the pocket for another defensive player coming across to get that ball and go back up the field Liberty likes to take some shots down the field. They've been effective over the first couple of weeks. Salter yards per completion is actually up over 16, 16.67, which is sixth best in the nation. And now faced with second down. And off for Shedro Lewis, and he's tripped up at the 43-yard line. Brendan Harris makes the tackle, but it's going to be a third and manageable coming up here for the Flames. And a great job by number 88, Jerome Jackson, coming across. He gets the clear out block, right? He gets up in the hole, boom, right there. That's what you need right there. Cover up the defender. Give Lewis the lane that he needs to get up the field. Lewis 30 yards away from 1,000 in his career. Third and three. And you see, they're going with the hard count so they can see what they're doing defensively. A little shift from the Wake Forest defense. Handoff again, and not going to get there. Lewis tackled down by Chase Jones. 
an interesting game of cat and mouse on that play. You saw them go with the hard count, and Wake Forest showed the blitz. They had six up at the line of scrimmage. When they backed out of it, now you've got a running play that Liberty call expecting that blitz package, but they did not bring it. Are you surprised by this? They're on their own 45-yard line now, fourth and one. Offense staying on the field. Absolutely not. That's Hugh Freeze on the other side. Right? Mm -hmm. And Hugh Freeze comes to win a football game. So I like the idea of playing aggressive and letting your team know you believe in them. Fourth down. Lewis carries, and he's got it. First down for Liberty. Powerful play there. And Shedrill Lewis keeps the drive alive. And a good job by Liberty. They show the jet sweep action, so the linebackers have to react to that. And they go with the dive play right up the middle, up the gut of that defense. They only needed two yards, and that's what you're looking for. Get the first down. You don't have to make the big play. You don't have to score a touchdown. Mm -hmm. You need to get the first down. One for two now on fourth down today. Previous and, drive was stopped. And that builds confidence yeah. in not only your offense, but your defense. Well, and Hugh Freeze, who calls the plays, and he's got it in his mind, right? He already knows, right? Okay, I get it to fourth and three or less or whatever. I'm going for it, and he's, he's got it all set up. And Lewis able to get the first. Now it's a pass caught by C.J. Yarbrough, and he fumbles the football, and it rolls out of bounds. And they have game plan for Gavin Holmes. Every time they see him in man coverage, they're going to that receiver. He did a poor job of trying to get inside the receiver. You've got to make that tackle when you're the only person on the outside. And this is really interesting, too, as you see it again here for us, because we were told, you know, with Gavin Holmes, he's had more snaps than anyone in the nation for not allowing his player a reception. Okay, we were told that, and he likes the one-on-one -on -one coverage, and then all of a sudden here today, he's been flagged twice, and they're going right after him. That has been debunked early in this ball game. Yes. <laughs> Lewis on the carry, and he's going to be stopped after a short pickup. Yeah, that was something that we were told about with Holmes. And the one thing for Holmes, he can't, he's got to have a short memory. Right. You can't hold on to that. It's a football game. You're playing against great players. It happens. The best of players get beat on plays. But you've got to not think about that and think about the next play and go out and make a play instead of allowing a play to be made on you. Four receivers set at second down and nine. They fake on the option. It's a keeper from Salter. Not much. Rondell Bothroyd makes the play. One of the captains. Number 40 out of Manchester, Connecticut. Good start to the season for him. Puts Liberty in a third and long here. And this is, off, is an obvious passing down. It's going to be interesting to see if Wake Forest brings pressure. You should wonder if this might even be two down territory as well, depending and you know, how long a field goal possible, you never know, right? I think it's two down territory. I wouldn't put my kicker out there with a field goal this long. They've got to try and get a lot on it, so it'll be a low kick and it'll be a possibility for right. a block. Salter. Rolling and run out of bounds. Nothing happening there. Isaiah Wingfield was all over him, number eight. And Salter made a good decision on that play. The coverage was there. There was nowhere for him to go at the football. He didn't try and force it. That was a good job by Salter on that play. Now, one thing about long field goals is they've got to get a lot of foot in it. It's going to be low. So let's see if they can get enough on this football to avoid it being blocked. All right, so this is Nick Brown, and he is attempting a 54-yard field goal. No good. That's tough. I mean, Brown, who was two for four coming in, he connected from 32 and 26. He's missed from 36 and 37. And we were told that, like, well, this is kind of a, a true test game for him here today. And then you put him out. Right, Wake Forest Liberty moving over to A. DU and a game-winning field goal. Some of the other games to keep an eye on ABC, Ole Miss over Georgia Tech, 21-0. Minnesota in action against Colorado and ESPN2, that one at the half. ESPN Plus, Appalachian State and Troy. That's a fun one. Watch that one. 
21 all. We are getting closer to kickoff in Baton Rouge. Jaden Daniels, his first SEC start tonight for the Tigers. One and one on the season. Let's throw out to Joe Tessitore calling the game coming up at 6 p.m. Eastern. Matt, strike up that golden band from Tigerland. Head coach Brian Kelly will have his SEC debut in moments. It's an intriguing game, Greg, against Mississippi State. Of course, Mississippi State and Coach Leach, they've got a veteran quarterback in Will Rogers. They have really talented receivers, but unlike air raid offenses of the past, you say, focus on the run game a little bit. Yeah, imagine that. You think about Mike Leach forever. It's almost when he handed it off, he was conceding defeat. That's like, right. Forget about We welcome you to Winston-Salem here with Wake Forest leading Liberty 3-0 late in this first quarter of action. Flag is down. Here's Adam Sabla. Offense, number 53. Five-yard penalty, third down. Mike Corey alongside former Florida State national champion offensive lineman Forrest Connolly. Marilyn Payne with us on the sidelines. Homecoming here today and a beautiful day at Wake Forest. Stephen Deacons off to a 3-0 lead. And my early assessment is the defensive line from Liberty has accepted the challenge and they are getting penetration. They are doing exactly what they want to do at the point of attack. Let's see if Wake Forest can get something going offensively. Hartman on third down and seven. Over the middle and a low throw and it's incomplete. Keyshawn Williams, the intended target, valiant effort, but a little short and it's gonna be fourth down, punt team comes on. And on that play, they were able to flush Hartman out the pocket with four pass rushers, seven back in coverage. They had someone kind of as a spy mm -hmm. on Hartman. So once he broke outside of the pocket, they brought pressure in his face, making him get rid of the football probably a little bit prematurely than he wanted to. Hartman coming into today needed just 197 yards passing to become Wake Forest's all-time leader. And it's punt time here as Ivan Mora punts to Demario Douglas. Douglas lets it go and going to be down at the 29 yard line and that's where Liberty will take over when we come back. Subway Series menu. 12 irresistible new subs. Like number 11, Subway Club. Piled with turkey, ham, and roast beef. This sub isn't slowing down anytime soon. I'll give it a run for its money. My money's on the sub. It's Subway's biggest refresh yet. Start playing and never stop playing. You get the most from the game when you're having fun. This summer, save and invest while you spend. Summer toys, that's investing. Summer treats, that's investing. Summer drinks, that's investing. Start investing with just your spare change. My hair started thinning in my early 20s. I'm genetically predisposed, so we created Nutrafol. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement. It's never too late to improve your hair health. Get started at Nutrafol.com slash men. and use code TV16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes. We're excited to do business with you, but before we sign, I gotta ask. Sure, anything. We searched you online and maybe you can explain this? Can't believe that garbage is still coming in. That is so false. Frustrated with your online search results? Call Reputation Defender today to join tens of thousands who've improved their online reputation. Get your free reputation report card at reputationdefender.com or call 1-877-866-8555. Let's get you caught up with what we've had so far here today, Forrest, 3-0 Wake Forest. And find his receiver down the field, go through his progressions, unlike what we've seen since this drive. But he was able to get the ball to his playmakers. They were able to make plays for him and put themselves in a position to get a field goal. What's going to be interesting is how this offensive line responds to the pressure package that they've seen since this drive. Forest and Forest here today, right? <laughs> one's got two R's, one's got one. Or... Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> 
Number 19, Wake Forest, here on homecoming today. Dave Clawson on the left, Hugh Freeze on the right. Liberty back on offense. Just under two minutes to play in the first, and Caden Salter from the shotgun. The handoff goes to Hunter. Going in the wrong direction. Gang tackled back at the 20-yard line. Ryan Smenda Jr., among many others, in on the play for Wake Forest. And this play was played by number 91, Kevin Pointer. He got penetration right there, and he forced the back to get around the edge and go backwards. And that's what you want to do as a defender. You don't necessarily have to make the tackle, but when you can mess up the play and force the back to another hole, now you allow pursuit to get there. They've been doing that so far here today in the backfield a lot on this Liberty team. And yet again, and he's going to be sacked. Salter, Jasheen Davis. And as an offensive tackle, the thing that you don't like to see is six foot two, six three, two forty, two fifty, because that's a speed rusher. That's a guy that's quicker than you, and very much so, more so athletic than you are. So you've got to have great technique when you're blocking a smaller guy, because they're trying to get skinny. They're not trying to base and come through you. They're trying to get around you, fake you out, and use their quickness and speed. And that's the third sack of the day for Wake Forest. Under a minute to go here in the first third and long. They're going to keep it on the ground. You got to do that safe play, Hunter. He's going to be tackled down the 20 yard line, and it's punt time for Liberty. Going to be fourth and 20. And it's almost like the Wake Forest defense came out on this series and said, okay, enough is enough. Right. We're going to bring the house. We're going to shut this down. We're not going to play safe. We're not going to try and keep Salter in the pocket. We're just going to come up the field and play aggressive defense. This defense is under that. Back at Truist Field, Wake Forest with a 3-0 advantage. Start of the second quarter here, and it's punt time for Aiden Alvis and Liberty. Fourth and 20 to begin the second. Taylor Marin at his own 33. Look out, he's got some room midfield. Marin, 40 at Liberty, 35, went out of bounds inside the 35. Let's go downstairs. What's happening, Maryland? player and bachelor alum Matt James he was the open the gate honoree leading the team out on the field today on the back of the Demon Deacon motorcycle and I just got to know what's more nerve rattling a rose ceremony or that with the reigning Atl Atlantic Division champs chasing you down that's probably the most productive thing I've ever done for the team um, more nerve-wracking than anything not a rose ceremony I've got my girlfriend right here beside me Rachel uh, it was, yeah, this was like a very easy ask. It's just nice to be back home, and it's good to see that Clawson's got the Deeks rolling right now. So yeah, he, he certainly does, and you made a, a very special announcement being recognized here. Your mom now has her own Women's Athletic Scholarship Fund, the Patty James Women's Scholarship Fund for the athletic department here for the Deeks. What is the story behind you needing to do that? I just, you know, I was just so blessed and fortunate with, you know, all that, you know, God's given me. And um, I want to use those things to provide opportunities for people like myself. Uh, and I felt the best way to do that was to honor the person who, you know, paved the way for me, which was my mom. And um, providing a, an athletic scholarship for, you know, a young woman to come here and get the education that I got and have ac access to these resources is going to be life changing. And um, uh, I'm excited for that person. I'm sure the Deeks are excited for them as well. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you. Go Deeks. All right, so the Demon Deacons are moving the football here now. Jamal Banks, who makes the catch good for the first down. This is all set up after the 36-yard punt return from Taylor Marin. And right back to work, Hartman. And sails it over the head of Banks this time. It'll be second down. And a good job by Dejon Anthony on that play to not allow Hartman to re release the football when he wanted to. He had to bring the ball back and release it late. Second down and 10 inside the red zone for Wake Forest. Fake to Ellison on the rollout. Hartman looking, nobody open, has to tuck it and run. He's going to be flung out of bounds by Mike Smith Jr. for Liberty. Mike Smith, number seven, played this play 
perfect. He stayed with the receiver across the field, not giving Hartman that short out route that he wanted to go to. And as soon as Hartman planted and got north to south, he went up and made the tackle. That's exactly how you need to play that play. Really good job there. Hartman now to the end zone. And Jamal Banks has it. Touchdown. And I'm still trying to figure out how that ball got between number nine, Treadwell, and number eight, Anthony. They both were there. It almost seemed like they got confused, like one thought the other was going to make a play on the football, so he avoided trying to knock that ball down or get the INT. 16-yard pass for the touchdown. Matthew Dennis adds the extra point. Number eight, Anthony. Number nine, Treadwell. They are both there. They're both having an opportunity to make a play on the football, but then all of a sudden they kind of got confused. And you see them kind of looking at each other after the play like, did you have it? I should have had it. You had it. Fubo TV has the most college football you can get without cable. Stream up to four games at once with Multiview. Watch your favorite teams live on all your devices. Try free at FuboTV.com. I think I'm a good looking guy, but I have these noodly arms. Look at them! Well, dude, your t-shirt fits you terribly. You should wear True Classic tees. They'll fit you perfectly. Whoa, these are so much better. Now I just gotta do something about this gut. I just heard about this company, True Classic Tees. Go on. Apparently, they fit you perfectly. These are incredible. Who told you about these? Saw them in an ad that we're doing right now. Are you wasting money on overpriced car insurance? Jerry saves the average person $71 a month. They compare lower quotes from over 50 carriers in 45 seconds. So stop wasting and start saving. Visit GetJerry.com. This Clemson team is dangerous. Never be afraid of your strength. Because your body is capable of amazing things. The one they said you shouldn't have. The one driven by a power they can't see. Own your strength. And see how far it takes you. Tono, be your strongest. Your cravings are as unique as you are. And with over 1,400 delicious snacks, Nuts.com can satisfy everyone. Salty, sweet, healthy, or indulgent. Unbelievable variety, unbeatable freshness. And right now, get free shipping on your first order. Demon Deacons on top, 10-0 early second quarter here today from Winston-Salem. Sam Hartman with another touchdown pass to his credit. Finding Jamal Banks. That's five touchdown passes now in the season for him. Demario Douglas back to return the kick. Douglas, across the 20, 30. Good return to the 33-yard line. Let's go back to that last drive, though, for us. Hugh Freeze was upset after a pass over the middle of the field that was ruled a catch, and Wake Forest goes so quickly. This is Marin. Watch what happens here. Well, he was adamant that the ball was not caught, and it was not caught on that play, but the officials missed it. You can see Hugh Freeze and it hit the ground, it hit the ground, but they moved so quickly that they got back up to the line of scrimmage and ran the next play and never got reviewed. And then ultimately Wake Forest gets a touchdown out of it. That's a big play so far early in this game. So now Salter back to work for Liberty. Actually, it's Jonathan Bennett. Bennett is in and he's going to be sacked. 
And the offensive tackle did a poor job of staying square to the line of scrimmage. As an offensive tackle, you've got to kick back. You've got to keep your shoulders square. Watch the offensive tackle. You see, he turned those shoulders on the second kick step. You've got to get a third kick step, and then you're at the quarterback's level, and you can turn and run that defender past the quarterback. But you've got to give him the width of the pocket. You've got to keep those shoulders square. So they go with Jonathan Bennett now, the junior out of Somerville, South Carolina. And he's going to hand off here to Shedra Lewis, and he'll be tackled down in just a short pickup. So we thought about this here earlier today that we're going to see two quarterbacks for Liberty. Remember, the starter in Charlie Brewer is injured. He's out five to six weeks. So Caden Salter, the redshirt freshman, and now you got Jonathan Bennett, the junior who's in. Coaches praised him that he has made the fewest mental mistakes out there. Very high IQ quarterback, but... We've got an injury here to the left tackle, Nazir Watkins. They'll attend to him, and we'll be back. Subs, the most epic sandwich roster ever created. It's Subway's biggest refresh yet. We're excited to do business with you, but before we sign, I got to ask. Sure, anything. We searched you online and maybe you can explain this. Can't believe that garbage is still coming in. That is so false. Frustrated with your online search results? Call Reputation Defender today to join tens of thousands who've improved their online reputation. Get your free reputation report card at reputationdefender.com or call 1-877-866-8555. I wanted to show you guys something that has been truly bringing me joy, and that is HelloFresh. And it's always difficult for me to choose what meal I want because they are all so good. <laughs> I'm always thinking about the food I put into my body and the quality of my food is so important and HelloFresh checks off all those boxes for me. So all in all, I get a variety of delicious meals, delicious ingredients, and I can whip up my meal in about 20 to 30 minutes and I save money, which are all touchdowns in my book. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code TV16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes. I can't afford this. Yeah, you can. Who are you? I'm you from the future, and I just got paid. And I'm Dave. I can get you up to 500 bucks of your future money now. 500 bucks instantly? Instantly. Awesome. And why are we naked? Oh, uh, after this, you're going to check into a nudist resort. They have free Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm, and volleyball. <laughs> cool. Download Dave and get up to 500 bucks instantly. No interest, no credit check. Introducing the all-new one-wheel GT in Pint X. GT, built with more power to crush new terrain. Pint X, twice the range to take on the city. Two new boards to make everywhere epic. Get riding today at onewheel.com. So Nazir Watkins is out right now. The left tackle for Liberty being attended to. Came off the field, was visibly upset. So they're working on him. And we'll tell you about the huddle coming up tonight at 11 Eastern after Louisiana Tech Clemson. Complete wrap-up of this game. The whole day, all ACC and more highlights, analysis, interviews, players and coaches. They'll have it all covered right here on the ACC Network on the ESPN app. All right, so let's go offensively. We got Watkins out. You got Reddy at center. You got Jonathan Graham coming in now, 52. Cooper McCaw is in as well, 77. He's like the sixth guy and virtually a starter as well. So a little bit of a change up now in the O line for Liberty. We've got to see how well they can protect their quarterback. Bennett taking a shot. Douglas into traffic. It is intercepted. Isaiah Wingfield has it for Wake Forest. And Wingfield did something that you don't see defensive backs doing nowadays. He turned around and located the football. There was some contact with the receiver, but because he was playing for the football and not through the receiver, and he turned around, the officials let it go. A great job by Winfield on the outside. Watch, he's looking for the football. You see him right there? So there's a bit of contact. He kind of pushes the receiver away, but he's playing the football, and officials will let that go. I totally hear you, Forrest. It's a great point because a lot of them do not look back. As long as you look back and think about it, you look back and then you make a play. Absolutely. And he intercepts it. Now Hartman takes a shot. His arm was hit, and this pass is intercepted. His arm was hit as he threw, and it's picked off by Quentin Reese for Liberty, and he takes it down to the Wake Forest 35-yard line. 
And that is what happens when you run that play that they run with that mess point. They're walking towards the line of scrimmage. You see you're walking towards. So what you're doing is you're giving the defense time to get pressure on the quarterback, get in his face, because you're coming closer to the line of scrimmage as you walk up towards the line. You see him patting, and he's walking towards the line. Now you've gave the defense an opportunity to get up in that hole and get an arm up and knock his arm, not allowing him to follow through on that pass. Hey, how about the job by Dre Butler, number five, the defensive tackle up front for Liberty. He got in there and deflected and got a piece of the arm there of Hartman as the ball was picked off. And now Jonathan Bennett and Liberty with a first and 10 of the 35-yard line. They hand off to Lewis, and he spins his way for a good six yards to the 29-yard line. Garns on the tackle for the Demon Deacons. And I think with the quarterback situation for Liberty, this is what you need to do. You've got a 38-pound weight differential with their offensive line versus the Wake Forest defensive line. You've got to get these big fellas to lean on that defensive line for Wake Forest. Start to get them tired. Start to use your girth to get positive yards. Well, they need something prior to this uh, drive here. They had 23 plays and only 35 total yards in this game. And now this is the first time they start in Wake Forest territory. So outstanding field position from the 29 play fake from Bennett pressure hit as he throws and he just has to get rid of it it's well overthrown and incomplete Kobe Turner was in there the graduate student the defensive lineman with pressure that time on Bennett and I like on the outside Gavin Holmes number seven he fought out there and I like the fact that he came back and fought they went at him early in the first quarter mm -hmm. and he looked like he was down on himself a coaching staff pulled him over for a couple of plays they talked to him while they were still on a defensive series and you see the response from Holmes he has reacted and responded well yeah, sometimes you just got to get out there and, and see who you're working up against, right? He's got some talented guys he's going up against today. And settle down a little bit. Yeah. You know, there's a lot going on. It's homecoming. Everybody's excited about the opportunity. Third and four, Bennett. And that pass is knocked down and incomplete. They wanted Douglas, and Caleb Carson was there to make the play for Wake Forest. And a good job on the outside by Carson to stay on top of the receiver and make a play on the football. Not go through the receiver, but reach around him and be able to get his arm in there right when the ball arrived. So Nick Brown has come back on here on fourth and four to attempt a field goal. This one is going to be a 47-yard attempt. He missed from 54 earlier. This one from 47 to get Liberty on the board here. Plenty of distance, it's good. He nails it. Nick Brown. And so Liberty, they turn it over, but then they got it right back, and they turn it into three. We'll be back after this. Our business, we were paying like an arm and a leg for the postage. I remember setting up ship station. I think it was just like one or two clicks. Everything was up and running. I was printing out labels and <laughs> saving money. ShipStation saves us so much time. It makes it really easy and seamless. Pick an order, print everything you need, slap the label onto the box, and it's ready to go. Our cost for shipping, like, we're cut in half, just like that. ShipStation, the number one choice of online sellers. Go to ShipStation.com TV and get two months free. The Solo Stove Bonfire is the hottest new reason to get outside. With its signature 360 airflow design, Firewood gets just the right amount of oxygen. And since it's easy to light, it gets going fast. It's America's favorite smokeless fire pit for a reason. On Fire is made for when those good moments become lasting memories. Save $10 using promo code TV10 at solostove.com. Having trouble getting help for erectile dysfunction? Get help fast with Lemonade Health. Just answer a few questions. And they can send you medication so you can get better quickly. Visit LemonadeHealth.com today. At SafeLight, we take care of vehicles with the latest technology. We can replace your windshield and recalibrate your safety system. And they recycled my old glass. Don't wait. Schedule today. SafeLight Repair, SafeLight Replace. Show the world what it means to be an ACC fan at Fanatics.com the largest assortment of officially licensed ACC fan gear anywhere. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. 
Jordan Cornett, Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, and a coach, Coach Mark Rick. I know this place is going to be jumping. It's a ballet Ten to three, Wake Forest on top with 10:55 to play in this second quarter. 47-yard field goal connected by Nick Brown gets Liberty on the score. There's interceptions, back-to-back -back interceptions. Isaiah Wingfield picked off Jonathan Bennett for Liberty, but then Sam Hartman threw it right back. Quinton Reese had the pick for the Flames. And they started in Wake Forest territory and ended up with a field goal, so they're on the board here. Seven point advantage. And here comes the kick from Jason Stricker. We've seen some amazing fans across the ACC, and now we need your help. This fall, ACC Network wants to experience each sport from your perspective. Snap a pic or take a video, tag it with a hashtag, all the devotion, and post it to your social. You just might see it on the ACC Network. What a day here today in Wake Forest. You talked about it in the open, Forest, about the different feel that this program has right and the fan base you know here in Winston-Salem as well as Keyshawn Williams makes this catch for the Demon Deacons pretty good pickup on first down well the, the expectation is to win and compete for championships and not just division championships but conference championships the expectation is to be one of the teams talked about uh, when they talk about teams playing in the playoffs so when you look at that and you look at the type of recruits that they're getting in, I understand why the culture has changed. Hartman for Williams again. And there's that mess play. Hartman holds the ball in the belly of the back, and they both walk towards the line of scrimmage. What that does is it freezes the linebackers, it freezes the safeties. You saw the safety right there freeze on that play. Number six, Rami, and he was able to get the ball over the top. 42-yard pass play, and now they find Jamal Banks. So interesting how the series and things change. You had Quentin Reese, who picked off the pass previously. Now he's trying to track down a defender as he got beat deep. Well, it's such a difficult play to defend, and the way that you defend that play is you've got to get pressure mm -hmm. by your defensive lineman. They've got to get up because if they do, you'll get an opportunity to hit his hand or knock the ball down like we saw on that interception. Christian Turner in the backfield. He gets the call. And Turner on that offensive line just pushing their way down close to the 10-yard line. I mean, you really got to like what that veteran group has done up front. Well, they seem to have woken up. Uh, that first quarter, it did not seem like they were in the ball game, but now you see them starting to play with flat backs. They're getting that second foot down, and when I say that second foot, that is when you make contact when that second foot is down. If you make contact prior to that second foot being down, you're going to get knocked back. Turner again, and nothing doing here. So good job by Liberty up front. Stuff that one up. There's Walker, among others, and Maude Walker. Made a few plays so far here today for this group. Hartman now faced with a third and short. And let's see who fires off with the flat back. Who makes contact first? Hartman has connected on seven of his last eight passes. That one is low and incomplete, almost picked off. And again, Mike Smith Jr. He called his name out a few times here today as well. Well, Hartman saw pressure coming from his left side, but a good job by number zero, Christian Turner, to pick up the blitz. I think Hartman had a little bit more time, but he did not know if someone was going to pick that blitz package up. So I think he got rid of the ball prematurely, but there was an opportunity to let that play develop. 27-yard field goal attempt here for Matthew Dennis. To try to get that three right back. And he does. 13-3, Wake Forest. 8-39 remaining second quarter. Covered. 
that simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. I should do this for a living. The new Subway Series menu, the greatest sandwich roster ever assembled. For more on the new boss, here's Patrick Mahomes. Incredible. Meatballs, fresh mozzarella, and pepperoni. Oh, the meatball's out. I thought he never fumbles. The new Subway Series. What's your pick? Take your favorite radio stations, the music you love, and the biggest podcasts in the world wherever you go with the free iHeartRadio app. Download it now. iHeart Podcast is the number one podcast network and is home to the biggest creators in podcasting and your favorite sports podcasts like All the Smoke, Around the NFL, The Dan Patrick Show, and many more. Listen on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you listen to podcasts. Start playing and never stop playing. You get the most from the game when you're having fun. We're Carvana. We've created a brand new way for you to sell your car. Go to Carvana, answer a few questions, and our techno wizardry calculates your car's value and gives you a real offer in seconds. We'll come to you, pay you on the spot, then pick up your car. That's it. At Carvana. Bojangles Family Meal has more to choose from. Coleslaw. Dirty rice. Mac and cheese. Those scratch-made biscuits. More choices of handcrafted fixings for everyone. You won't find that in a bucket or a bundle. It's boat time. Since I was little, I wanted to be a part of a team. Come here, buddy. Nice shot. I've played just about every sport there is growing up. My mom's been there for me through every season. We'll get him next time. Mostly to keep me fueled and cheer me on. It took me a minute, but I finally found what I love. All thanks to her. You're always there for them, and we're always here for you. Food Lion, here for every moment. Auto owners, insures your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. That's a good outfit. I like that. 13-3. Wake Forest leads it here from Truist Field in Winston-Salem. 27-yard field goal there from Matthew Dennis. Corey Forrest Connolly, Marilyn Payne with you here today. Boy, this Wake Forest defense, Forrest, 41 total yards by Liberty today. And their last three drives, they've amassed just 13 yards. Well, they're bringing pressure from the outside. They're not allowing the quarterbacks for Liberty to get their feet set. And they're playing aggressive up the field defense. They're not sitting back and waiting for it to happen. I thought they were sitting back a little bit early in the ball game, but they're not now. Well, this will set up Liberty with good field position here to start this drive. There are two fouls on the play, both by the kicking team. Illegal equipment, two zeros on the field. That penalty is declined. Kick out of bounds, number 36. Ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. That's like when your play-by-play -play buzzes down to them to say, hey, two zeros here. I don't know what I'm going to do, you know? And uh, thank you, Adam Savla on the uh, call there. ACC PM is ACC Network's new afternoon studio show. Mark Packer hosted along with former Tire Heel football standout Trey Boston, former Seminole Taylor Tannenbaum, focusing on football, of course, but also the latest around the conference. ACC PM weekdays from 4 to 7 Eastern right here. Correction. On the, the ACC penalty Network. For two zeros on the field was against the receiving team, so there are fouls by both teams. Which will offset, we will re-kick. It is interesting, right? I mean, you got Kobe Turner and Christian Turner for Wake Forest, but it's not on them. It's Jerome Jolly and Day Day Hunter, the two zeros for Liberty. We're all over this, uh, Forrest. This is what this is what you this is where you get nightmares in your prep, you know, throughout the week and something that the fans don't know and realize that we go through. Right. There's one of the zeros. And that's Hunter. Or Jolly, excuse me. <laughs> right, you can't, you know, you, know, you, gotta, you gotta, find name. Name. Yeah. gotta find a name. You gotta find a name. And listen, one's uh, 5'10, 190, one's 5'11, 215. I mean, you know, sometimes I love it when they say, well, 
like, I'm not going to see that from way up yeah, here. <laughs> One ninety two fifteen from where we are looks just the same. <laughs> not that big of a difference. So the re kick. And this time up across the 25 to the 27 is where Liberty will start. No flags down. How about the sacks so far today for Wake Forest? Well, it starts with the offensive line. You've got to do a better job of keeping, maintaining your block. And then you've also got to do a good job of keeping your shoulders square to the line of scrimmage and creating that width that the quarterback needs. We saw Salter get outside of the pocket a little bit early in the ball game and wait for us decided okay you know what we're going to bring pressure we're not going to sit back and try and keep the edges we're going to get up the field and not allow him to get going and you see the effects of that but once again the offensive lineman you cannot give up a short corner you've got to stay square to the line of scrimmage Caden Salter is back in and his pass is caught from CJ Yarbrough and he's got a first down and more nice job there for Liberty on their opening play of this drive and I think Salter is the better quarterback when you look at his ability to run the football and get outside. It makes the defense think a little bit more and not be as reactive as they are with the other quarterbacks. And that was a gain of 17 on that pass play up to the 45 yard line. I agree with you, Forrest. And you know, we were told that Bennett was going to get some time and I think that's just what it was, right? It wasn't like Salter was playing horribly or anything, right? I mean, well, I, well, I played with a quarterback that could do that, Charlie Ward. Oh, yeah? And, you know, defenses had to account for his ability to get to the outside and run the football. So when you've got a quarterback that is dynamic, like Salter, that has quick feet, that can get outside the pocket, now what that does is that stresses your defense because as a defensive back, when you're looking back and you see that quarterback break contain and get to the outside, your natural instinct is to come up the field to try and make a play and not let him get up the field. But you've got to keep your eyes on the receiver because he has that stop and throw ability. A lot of discipline, right? I mean, it's just You've got to play your 11. Yeah. Second down for Liberty. They've amassed just 18 rushing yards in this game. The pass is incomplete. Off the hands of Caleb Coleman. And watch the play on this play. A good job by the defensive back to react to the receiver and get up and get his hand in there to knock that ball down. That was Kalen Carson. 10 point lead Wake Forest second quarter just over the halfway point of the quarter third down play clock keep an eye on that I don't know if Liberty knows what they want to do here yeah timeout is taken timeout. Liberty their first 30 seconds Liberty has been making some headlines, not always just on the football field, but overall the school has been outstanding. 18 conference titles in all sports over the last two years. Think about upcoming in 2023-24, they're moving into Conference USA. That's big for them as well. This football program has won three straight bowl games, one of only five teams in the nation to do that. So pretty impressive, right, Marilyn? Extra Yard for Teachers Week is an annual back-to-school effort led by the College Football Playoff Foundation that brings college sports together to recognize and show appreciation to great teachers across the country. To support Extra Yards for Teachers recognition and resource initiatives, follow at CFP Extra Yard or scan the QR code for more. Here at Wake Forest, redshirt sophomore Taylor Moran is most appreciative of Professor Nicholas Lutzweiler. He's taught Taylor in two advanced engineering classes. Lutzweiler is also so appreciative of Marin's drive and passion to succeed. Pass is complete to number zero, Dave Hunter. Taylor wants to shout out Lutzweiler himself because of just how much Lutzweiler cares about Taylor as a person, he says. But it's Lutzweiler who believes that he's had the privilege to see Taylor Marin's drive and passion to succeed in engineering and on the football field. Yeah, no doubt about it, Marilyn. I mean, he's going to graduate in three and a half years, and to have that GPA at 3.9 in engineering, that is phenomenal, especially 
you know, here, just outstanding. Number two, Taylor Marin, and he's made some plays today on the field for Wake Forest, but right now they're on defense here in Liberty with fourth down and two from the 47. Salter, catch is made, and it's a first by Douglas. And Douglas did a good job of finding the sticks, turning around, and making himself a target for his quarterback. Too often you see young receivers not get up the field enough, but you saw what Douglas did. He found the sticks and he sat down and allowed the quarterback to get the ball to him. Now he almost made a mistake going backwards to try and make a play, but he did a good job of getting past the sticks to get that first down. What do you think about this guy, Forrest? 5'8", 170. He's only a sophomore, and we're hearing that, yeah, this guy's got NFL potential, and potentially he might even go after this year. What do you think about that? Well, he's got the tw quick twitch ability that you need at that size to be successful at the next level. Salter hoisted up into traffic and is intercepted. Chalen Garns has it for the Demon Deacons. Second pick of the day for them. And that was a bad decision by Salter. There was coverage on top and coverage underneath Douglas. Everyone knows that Douglas is the big play receiver for Liberty, so they're going to make sure that he's not able to get on top of the defense. That one was just kind of hoisted up there. I mean, that was trouble once you saw him leave his hands. Well, you know, once again, you cannot rely on your athletic ability. You have to play technique football. But they had him covered over the top and underneath. And that was just a bad decision by Salter on that play. Yep, it was Wingfield back there with Garns. To your point, Garns gets the pick. Wingfield had the pick earlier, so they each have one now this season. Wake Forest is forced to turnover in 34 of their last 35 games. It's been an outstanding job defensively. You know, after Liberty had really started the move of football. And now this catch is made, but out of bounds, incomplete. Donovan Green. Did not get the foot in. And a good job by Liberty to keep coverage on the outside, not give Hartman anywhere to go with the football. I don't think they bring pressure right now. I think they sit back and make Hartman beat them. Well, if you think about it, somewhat for the Liberty defense, I mean, you got Wake Forest backed up deep, and Hartman has not been really beating you all that bad here today. I mean, he came in needing 197 yards to become the all-time leading passer, and he's still a ways away from that here, and they only got 13 points. Well, you have to wonder. When you know that there's an opportunity to break a record, uh, there's an opportunity to do something big, it has an effect on you as a player. There's pressure there. I mean, he's got a big game next week. We have to talk about that as well. Right. Are they looking ahead to the big game here next weekend? Clemson comes to town. Hartman standing strong in his end zone that he's finally going to be taken down. And that is a coverage sack. They're rushing four, dropping seven back into coverage. There's nowhere for Hartman to go at the football, and Kendy Charles makes a play. Number 91, he's made plays throughout the afternoon, but he continues to fight, 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 and you see Hartman, he's climbing the pocket, looking for somewhere to go at the football, and finally Charles was able to get to him. That's a coverage sack, a good job. And once again, that's what I thought we would see. They're dropping seven, rushing four. They're not worried about making a big play. They're worried about not allowing Wake Forest to make the big play. Mm -hmm. Well, and now you've got Demario Douglas back to return this punt here from Ivan Mora, and Douglas is standing at the Wake Forest. 46 yard line, it's blocked. Jerome Jolly blocks it. And you saw by the lineup, they were trying to get through. Nothing aggressive about the protection from the Wake Forest special teams. You've got to be aggressive in your protection when you're that deep in your own territory. Look. There's nothing aggressive about it. Look at the two personal protectors. They're kind of just sticking their chicken wings out there. You've got to be aggressive and hit those guys when they're coming in. You're bigger than those guys. You've got to make them feel it when they come inside. But they're just kind of chicken winging it, sticking their hands out there. You've got to hit those guys in the mouth. Jerome Jolly Jr., the sophomore linebacker in on special teams, swats it away for the safety. It is now 13 to 5 favor Wake Forest. 
and that's a lack of aggression at the point of attack. You've got to know they're coming for it when you're that deep in your own territory. Mm -hmm. This is a team that is not expected to win. They're going to do any and everything possible to make every big play that they can with every opportunity that presents itself. So you see those two big guys back there. I'm sure the coaching staff is not happy with the lack of physicality we saw on that play protecting the punter. Yeah, I mean, they had Wake Forest backed up, and they got after him, and they get two points out of it, and now a chance to get this one back and are a one score away from tying this game, a touchdown and a two-point conversion if they so choose to go for that early here. 439 in the second remaining. It's going to be Ivan Mora to kick. There's Douglas. Ball blows off the tee from the 20 yard line. And is it me, Mike, or does it seem like Wake Forest is just flat? I, I don't see I, the energy. I feel you. That yes. you usually see from this ball club. It's homecoming. Yes. You know, this is a big weekend. I agree. You know, and you're getting ready to get into the meat and potatoes of the ACC schedule uh, with Clemson coming in here next week. And they just seem really flat right now. They do. But it's interesting because they have made some really good plays on defense. They've been getting after the quarterback. They got four sacks in this game. They got two interceptions. I think more so on the offensive yes. side, right? The offense the offense is where the What's going on? Yeah, the defense is kind of, they, they started out kind of slow, kind of flat, but they've picked it up. But offensively, they just seem flat and uninterested. Well, and Demario Douglas here trying to make them pay on this kick, and he gets up close to midfield. So outstanding field position run out by A.J. Williams. And Liberty, with four minutes and 32 seconds remaining in the first half, has the ball after a 22-yard return. Maryland. Chalen Garns had barely sat down after his INT when he realized he was getting back up to go on the field. He took a deep breath, and Isaiah Wingfield looked at him and said, it's okay, you can go get another one. He laughed, and he said, I was ready for that. I don't even know where I was, but I saw it, and it was mine to go get. So he didn't feel great about hopping off the bench, but he has confidence that they're not done picking off the flames here. They do, Marilyn. They've each got one, number eight, Wingfield, and number nine, Garns. Each with interceptions here today. Garns the transfer out of Navy. And here is Hunter into Wake Forest territory at the 48-yard line. And right there, arm tackles. You've got to bring the man down because when you get those second-level defenders up in the box and, and they get downhill, if they don't make the tackle, there's no one there left except third-level defenders that are out trying to get uh, cover these receivers on the outside. Flags come in. Ball start. Offense number 60. Five yard penalty. Second down. Let's check in with the studio. Update North Carolina AT and Duke. And it's Duke striking first right out of the gates. Riley Leonard to Nikki Dalmolin. 38 yard touchdown. Duke rolling, sold out crowd there at William Wade Stadium. Back to you, Mike and Forrest. All right, thanks very much. We'll get back to you guys at halftime here at three minutes and 34 seconds away from that of game clock is Liberty with a second down now back in their own territory. Salters pass is caught by Douglas at the Wake Forest 39 yard line, brought down by Mustafa, but it's a first down, first and 10 from the 39. And you see Douglas on a deep crossing line. And watch Salter. He's able to set his feet. He's watching. He's watching. And he's able to release the football and do a good job of putting the ball where only his receiver, Douglas, can make a play on it. That's the progression that you want to see from Salter at quarterback position. Salter's pass deflected, and it is picked off. Chase Jones has it for Wake Forest. Their third interception today. They got the tip. And Jones, one of the captains, gets the pick. And the offensive linemen have got to do a better job of punching in the midsection when a defender jumps up to bat a ball down. You're taught to sit, sit, and punch. But once again, when you let pressure get in the face of your quarterback, this is what happens. You saw the loop. You saw the stunt on that play. He was able to get on top of the quarterback and knock that ball down. You called it for us. Kobe Turner got the block that time as they congratulate him on the sidelines. And Chase Jones 
The junior linebacker with the interception. Can Wake Forest take advantage of it here? Hartman guns it in there, and the catch is made. He's got A.T. Perry, and it's right at the first down marker. We'll see if they give it to him. And that's that mess play. Once again, you see him put the ball in the belly of the back, and he walks towards the line of scrimmage. The one thing they did different on that play, they went with the short pass because if you go with the long pass, you have to allow it to develop, and that allows those defenders to get up the field and possibly knock the ball down. And now it's Wake Forest's opportunity here to try to manage the clock late in this first half or not. As Hartman goes deep and the catch is made, he's got Donovan Green to the 11-yard line in front of Kobe Singleton. And Donovan Green did an excellent job of locating the football, keeping his balance, and turning to the outside. You see right here, he locates it, and he's able to turn his body around, and he squeezes the football with his hands and is able to get the reception. The yeah, offensive coordinator Warren Ruggiero says, no, 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 we're just going for it here. We, 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 <laughs> we move quickly, Mike. We're not worried about running out the clock here this first half. Maybe now, as that was a 41-yard pickup, just over two minutes remaining. Christian Turner in the backfield. He has it. And Liberty and Dennis Osagade ready for him. Flags come flying in, though, three of them. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 90. Penalty is half the distance of the goal. Automatic first down. And that's a tough break there as he makes the play, but gets called for the face mask. And Osaka Day did everything that you're supposed to do except for grab the face mask, and he didn't mean to do it. It wasn't malicious, but you got to let it go. When you realize you've got the face mask, let it go. But he continued to hold it, and it actually was malicious because yeah. he held on to it right. <laughs> to bring the back down. Well, you know, and sometimes you just reach your arm out there, and then all of a sudden he's... But you can feel the face yeah. mask. You can yeah. feel the bars, so you know that you've got it. you got to let it go. Hartman already has one touchdown pass today. Handoff, though, to Turner. And he's going to be brought down rather quickly. Nice job to get low. Quentin Reese, and the clock continues to run. In the offensive line, they're letting me down right now. I spoke so highly of them. <laughs> and once again, I'm not seeing flatbacks. I'm not seeing them get that second foot down upon contact. I'm not seeing guys playing like they're blocking that slid that we hate to do every week. <laughs> I'm not seeing guys on all fours bear crawling, getting up under these defenders. I'm seeing guys standing up and getting pushed back into the back. And you really got to feel like you got to get a touchdown here, right? You got to take advantage of the this opportunity and late in the first half and here's the pass it's caught Blake Whitehart and he is into the end zone touchdown Wake Forest eight yards out and they get it with 52 seconds remaining in the first half and that has to be busted coverage because nobody went with Whitehart and I almost thought Hartman didn't see him because he was open from the minute he went out on his route. Nobody went with him. You saw the linebacker try to react late, but he did not have the speed to get over there. And Whitehart was able to get to the end zone. Dennis for the extra point. And Wake Forest takes advantage of their third interception of the game, and they turn it into seven. And if you watch Whitehart, nobody goes with you. You see him get out to there as nobody goes with him. Everybody's concerned with the slot receiver. And when they realize nobody's covering him, it's too late. He's able to get up the field and get to the corner to, and get your hands up and knock that ball down. How big was that defensive? It may have been what they needed by Kobe Turner to get that offense, get that energy that you're right. expecting to see from this offense and from Sam Hartman. And as the leader of that offense, Sam Hartman needs to be in those offensive linemen's faces, telling them what he expects from them. They expect him to play great quarterback, but he expects them to block mm -hmm. and protect. Douglas on the return for Liberty, bumps it to the outside, has some room here across the 40, run out of bounds, and it's good starting field position. Jamal Martin knocked him out, and there's still plenty of time, 45 seconds to go, and two timeouts here for Liberty to work with. Let's update Hartman's numbers for you. 197. Well, he's just three away from becoming the all-time leading passer in Wake Forest history. 
And I think once he gets past that number, he'll probably settle down a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as great as he's been, and he knew he was going to get to that record, it's still something that affects you mentally because okay. you've worked so hard to get to this point. And I was saying earlier, I felt like he was kind of held in check a little bit there. I'd say, like, well, he's on pace for almost 400 yards passing today. <laughs> so, I mean, that's... It's going to be pretty impressive. Gavin Holmes is on coverage again for Wake Forest as they try to go to Caleb Sneed. It's incomplete. And I love the way that Gavin Holmes has responded in the second quarter. The first quarter early in this ball game, it looked like it was going to be a long afternoon for him, but he has responded extremely well. And that's about being a competitor and understanding that you're not going to win every play, but you've got to keep your head in the ball game. Passes out to Day Day Hunter. Tripped up as he gets into Wake Forest territory, and he has enough of the first. So the clock stops to move the chain. 32 seconds remaining. Well, the first thing right now for Liberty, you want to get in the field goal range, and if you do, then you want to try and take some shots in the end zone. Two timeouts remaining. Salter, a deep drop. Now he's got some space up the middle. Salter still at his feet. Eluding defenders left and right as he gets tackled inside the 20-yard line by Chalen Garns with 11 seconds remaining here in the first half. And what you saw right there was a defense that thought he was going to go down once he got the first down, but Salter understands. Timeout. Liberty. First seconds. 30 seconds. You know, he's got to get as many yards as possible to put the team in field goal position. And if so, try and get a touchdown. Mustafa had an opportunity, number three, to make a play, but he whiffed. Mm -hmm. You've got to make that play in the open field. You can't let Salter get by you and get those extra 10 yards. That was a gain of 26 by Salter. What do you think here? Maybe one play? I mean, if you're really risky and it didn't take a lot of time in the first one, you get two plays, I mean, in terms of shots to the end zone. I mean, you do have that one timeout remaining. I mean, you're definitely in field goal range, but you'd like to try to at least take one shot, right? I'm looking six. on the outside, number eight, Caleb Sneed. If he gets man coverage on the outside with his height at six foot three, I'm trying to throw a jump ball and see if he can go up and hand fight and try and get that ball and bring it down. Uh, but you want to throw it to the corner of the end zone. You want to throw it up and let them go try and make a play. You don't want to put yourselves in a position to give up a turnover. So you have to be careful with what you do. You've got a timeout left, so you can throw it in the middle of the field if you want to. So you've got the whole field to work with. But I think you go to your big receiver on the outside if you see man coverage. All right. No safety help over the Well, top. Snead is on the bottom of your screen. You mentioned him, number eight for Liberty. And who's matching up against him? Who else? Gavin Holmes, number seven for Wake Forest. And it looks like man coverage, doesn't it? Absolutely. You've got to watch number 22, A.J. Williams, to see if he fades over to that side. 11 seconds left. Salter, look out. Pressure throws it over the middle. And the catch is made. And they're going to have to use the timeout here. Jerome Jackson has it. And they do the final timeout with three seconds remaining. Timeout. Liberty, their third and final. 30 seconds. And I think with the more seasoned quarterback, he audibles out of that play, and he sees Snead on the bottom with man coverage on the outside. He's got a four-inch height advantage, and he goes for that. I think if that was Hartman yeah. and Wake Forest, he would have audibled out of that. But we talked about that with Coach Freeze and the coaching staff. That's a part of the development process that, you know, that Salter has to get and develop. What else was going on there is that they really collapsed in on him there. The Wake Forest team looks like they were allowing them, like they were trying to set up a screen because they had three guys right on Salter. But the thing about it also is when you throw the ball in the middle of the field, if, you, if I'm the coaching staff for Wake Forest, I'm like, let him run, let him run. Right, and tackle right, him. Once right. he gets to the five, the time would have run out. Right. So they do have an opportunity for the field goal. And it's going to be Nick Brown, be a 27-yarder. One for two today. Missed from 54, made from 47. This one from 27. It's a low liner, and it is good as he gets it through. And so That's Nick Brown is connected on two of three today. And so Wake Forest with a 20 to 8 lead. Two field goals, a safety for Liberty, and two touchdowns and two field goals for 
Wake Forest. And you have defensive backs that it's natural for them to feel like they need to come up and make a play, but also you get a jailbreak from your wide receivers, and they have to make themselves big and be playmakers for their quarterback on the outside. Jason Stricker kicks off. Keyshawn Williams is back deep for Wake Forest. And we'll see if Hartman can get the record here on this drive. Whether he goes to the air first to get things started for the third quarter. They got the touchdown at the end of the first half. Defense has been phenomenal. Three interceptions already by this Wake Forest defense with Wingfield, Garns, and Chase Jones helping to set up the offense. And this is a big drive to begin the second half. Well, I think for Wake Forest, they need to come out. They need to establish the run, their offensive line. They need to do a better job of getting fits. When you look at film, these guys play superb. This afternoon, not so well in the run game. Hartman goes to the air. Catch is made from Williams. And he gets up across the 30-yard line. And with that pass, Sam Hartman has now become the all-time leader in Wake Forest history. Passing the football, outstanding job by this young man, the junior from Charlotte, North Carolina. As they pick up five on the play. And now Ellison is tackled down. And once again, you see that offensive line in the run game getting pushed back. They're not getting their fits. They're not firing off with flat backs. They're not getting that second foot down. They've got to do a better job. Third and seven. And that's low and incomplete looking for Williams. So three and out here to begin this second half. Nine thousand seven hundred and sixty three career passing yards for Sam Hartman the all time leader in their history. And what a great career so far for Sam Hartman. And once again, he's persevered through some things, uh, through injury. Uh, you know, and he's done a really good job of being a leader for this ball club and making big plays when they needed him. Mora punts, Douglas. Fair catch, uh, just across the 25 yard line. And coming up next, we're going to cap off the night. Number five, Clemson hosting Louisiana Tech in Death Valley right here on the ACC Network, also on the ESPN app. And Clemson per Dabo. Offense needs to pick it up a little bit. They 35 points versus Foreman. They didn't feel like they had that great of a game versus Georgia Tech. And you know, what do you got here tonight in this game at home versus Louisiana Tech? Well, I think it'll be an interesting ball game. Uyangalele played extremely uh, much better, excuse me, in the second ball game of the season. And I think his development will tell you how far this Clemson ball club will go. But once again, you've got Klubnik right behind him. Mm -hmm. And there's some pressure there because he's a big time recruit. Caleb Sneed on the catch here for Liberty. Gets across midfield into Wake Forest territory, the 47 yard line. For his gang tackle there after a gain of 27. Gavin Holmes is in on the scene, among others. You see on the outside right now, Holmes, he got turned around, and that's what you cannot do. You've got to backpedal. You've got to be able to use your hips. You cannot allow the receiver to turn you around. And maybe that's from that first quarter when he got beat on the outside. You've got a much bigger receiver in Snead at six foot three. Well, and you said it. When he got turned around, there was like a six or seven yard cushion right there. And Snead was able to make that catch. And now that goes to the ground to Hunter. And he gets to the 43. So this is big here for Liberty. And Longest play of the day uh, for Liberty prior. And once again, Salter, he brings a different dimension from the quarterback position because of his ability to beat the defense with his feet, his ability to get to the outside, his ability to extend plays. Had 144 yards rushing coming into today, which is first on the team with a rushing touchdown. And now he takes off. Plenty of green grass. Off to the races. Keenan Salter, he's going to get the touchdown. 43 yards by Liberty's quarterback. 
and Caden Salter heard what I was saying, and this is why you have to play him because of his ability and his decision making with that athletic ability. Some of the things that Coach Freeze talked to us about was he wanted him to go through his progressions and not de depend and rely on that, but sometimes you have to let a quarterback be a quarterback and be special, and you see right there the special ability to get up the field. How about that? It's exactly what we heard from Maryland here right before the start of this second half of the conversation. It's Salter and Freeze must have had to get him going again, and he gets the touchdown right up the middle for the score. And it's a five-point game. The redshirt freshman, Caden Salter, 43 yards. To it's the all-new Subway Series menu. 12 irresistible new subs, like number four, Supreme Meats, Smoky Capicola, Genoa Salami, and Pepperoni. It's the dream team of meats. I still got my uniform. It's Subway's biggest refresh yet. Send no blitz. Send no blitz. Back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. Start playing and never stop playing. You get the most from the game when you're having fun. Politician Sherry Beasley says, Our leaders should only be responsive to the people they serve. Really, Sherry? Beasley was a partner in a law firm that was paid millions to lobby for special interests. Beasley's campaign is bankrolled by PACs, lawyers, and lobbyists. Now Beasley supports higher taxes on almost everyone to pay for special interest giveaways for the wealthy. Sherry Beasley works for them, not us. Senate Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. Did you or a loved one serve, live, or work at Camp Lejeune between 1953 and 1987? You may be entitled to compensation. A new bill could allow service members, families, and civilians who served, lived, or worked at Camp Lejeune to seek compensation for injuries caused by toxic water. Toxic water at Camp Lejeune has been linked to certain cancers, multiple myeloma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, leukemia, Parkinson's disease, infertility, birth injuries, and other health complications. Do not wait. Contact Thomas J. Henry today. Love the delicious taste of fried foods? Now you don't have to say no. Enjoy all the crunch without the calories with Cuisinart's air fryer, toaster, oven, and grill. Our innovative technology lets you fry food with powerful ultra-hot air and 98% less oil. And it does so much more. Our new grill function lets you sear and grill meats, fish, and veggies. This versatile oven will also griddle, bake, broil, convection bake, convection broil, warm, and toast. So you'll use it every day. Say yes to healthy and delicious with the Cuisinart air fryer, toaster, oven, and grill. This Clemson team is dangerous. What a catch! Touchdown, Clemson! Liberty is right back in this game, thanks to number seven, Forrest. Well, Kaden Salter, he's accounted for 182 of their 209 yards on offense, and he has been a playmaker, and I like what Coach Freeze did on that drive. Let him be special to what he does and let him do and be who he has the capability of being. Was that as simple as it just spread him out and allowed that middle? I mean, there was nobody there. Well, because he's been breaking to the outside and breaking the pocket and breaking contain, they have to stay to the outside and make sure he's not able to get off. But what they weren't prepared for was that quarterback draw. And you right. saw once he's able to get to the second level, you're not going to catch him. If we even, I'm leaving. And you see it right here. It was a called play and a great job by the offensive lineman to climb up to the second level and cover up those defenders. And when you saw him get to the second level, Ja'Cory Johns, number four, had an opportunity, but you saw the offensive lineman flash in front of his face, Gatlin, and that bit of space allowed Salter to get up the field. Second rushing touchdown of the season for Caden Salter. The first TD of the game here today for Liberty as they had two field goals and a safety. Now Hartman goes back to work here for Wake Forest, and a pass is dropped by A.T. Perry. And A.T. Perry turned up the field and tried to make a play before he had possession of the football. You've got to squeeze that football. Make sure you've got it before you turn up the field. And you've got pressure coming on Hartman. So once again, this offensive line has not done as good of a job as I thought they would be able to do. And that's a credit to this defense from Liberty. Hartman now goes over the middle. And he's got the tight end in Whitehart. 
We hadn't really called Perry's name too much today. Number nine for Wake Forest. And, you know, he's got 18 career touchdowns for this group. Top 10 in history and is the leading receiver for this team. And he's a matchup nightmare at six foot five. Hartman now taking a shot deep. And for Perry, as I say that, and it's incomplete. Retreating was Chris Megason for Liberty. You kind of just throw your arms up in the Air Force. What happened there? There were so many things that happened on that play. <laughs> I mean, first of all, Perry was wide open. Hartman didn't see him. You see the crowd screaming. And then Megginson, it's almost like he stopped. He started running to catch up with him. Then he slowed down. And then he sped up again. And he's able to get his hand in there. But Hartman didn't put enough on that football because Perry should have just been walking into the end zone. We had just talked about that. Where's A.T. Perry? And he had a 10-yard separation. And... Really, it was six. Instead, it's a punt now for Wake Forest on fourth and short. You can't risk this at your own 34-yard line. That almost got blocked by Treadwell. And it takes a Liberty bounce and goes back up close to the 40-yard line. So the Flames have an opportunity to... Football is the game of life. And it brings the community together. White, black... Boys, girls, flag, tackle. Football can revive communities. Anybody can play. That family value, that brotherhood is everything. It's really what all it's about is just having a good time and being able to play. There's never been a better time to play. Subway's dropping 12 new subs for the all-new Subway series menu. The new monster has juicy steak and crispy bacon. But what about the new boss? It looks so good. It makes me hangry. Settle down there, big guy. The new Subway series. What's your pick? The new iPhone 14 Pro. It's amazing. Yep, the camera is incredible. Ooh. And you'll get our best deal. Nice. But everyone should get it. Everyone can get it. Every new customer. And every existing customer. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. Every iPhone. OK, my work here is done. Everyone gets the best deal on every iPhone. It's amazing. Everyone gets AT&T's best deals on every iPhone. Get the new iPhone 14 Pro on us. Are you coming for my job? Introducing the all-new one-wheel GT in Pint X. GT, built with more power to crush new terrain. Pint X, twice the range to take on the city. Two new boards to make everywhere epic. Get writing today at onewheel.com. Fubo TV has the most college football you can get without cable. Stream up to four games at once with MultiView. Watch your favorite teams live on all your devices. Try free at fubotv.com. I don't like to spend a ton of time shopping, but I like to look good. For me, Poshmark makes that so easy. And whenever I get tired of something, I just relist it back on Poshmark. It's honestly a little addicting. Making some money I can spend, keep my wardrobe fresh. Back on December 26, 2020, Liberty was looking for their first ever victory over a ranked opponent. They had the opportunity to do so against number nine, Coastal Carolina in the Cure Bowl. And quarterback Malik Williams kept Liberty alive early. He had a couple of touchdowns and also 21 carries, 137 yards, four TDs. And then Coastal Carolina is in the tying it up to send it to overtime. But the Flames defense blocks the Chanteliers field goal. And Liberty wins the Cure Bowl 37 to 34. And now they try to beat a ranked opponent for the first time in the regular season here against number 19. Their best seasons in school history. And Liberty is down only five points here early in the third, and they have the ball. Well, they've done a good job of keeping their head and staying in this ball game and believing. And I think that is what you have to have. If you're going to get an upset, you have to believe that you can not only compete with the opponent, but you can beat the opponent. And you got that sense and that feel from this ball club all week long. Yeah. Every conversation we had with the coaching staff, even when we went with the SID before kickoff, I told you he had an energy about him. Like, you know, we're coming in here to win this ball game. Mm -hmm. Certainly playing strong here now as Wake Forest has had two three and outs in the last two drives. And this catch is made by Caleb Sneed. You know, and here's the thing to mention on the Wake Forest defense, right? I mean, they've been going after number seven, Gavin Holmes, all day. And they've been pretty successful, right? And then he also got... 
Kalen Carson, the other corner number one, and he came limping off the field on the last series, so he's not out there. And now they got to go down to Deshaun Jones, who's a redshirt freshman quarterback, number 10. You know, he's on the field right now, and he's down at the bottom of your screen, matched up on Snead. And there's no safety help at the top of the screen. And now they try to draw again, and Wake Forest a little bit more ready for it as the tackle's made by Garns. But again, pretty good yardage there from Salter. Well, you see the quick twitch by Salter, the wiggle, the shake. That's what you want. Look at him right here. A, regular, a, a quarterback right here is going to get tackled. Boom, boom. Step to the outside, fake out the defender, make him break his ankles, and get a positive three yards from where he should have been down. So an additional three yards, that is the added dimension that you get from a Caden Salter in his ability to run the football. They were really stymied early with the rushing yards. Now they're over 100 total for the game, and Day Day Hunter, he has space. He goes up the middle. Hunter gets away from the defender. Touchdown, Liberty. They've got the lead. 44 yards. And right now, this Liberty offensive line is playing grown man square chin football. They've got a 38 pound weight advantage and they are hitting Wake Forest in the mouth. They're running right in the gut of this defense and they're gutting them running straight up the middle. He almost went untouched till he got to the third level of this defense. And that's because these interior linemen are able to climb up to the second level defenders, cover them up. And once you get athlete on athlete, I think my guy can win, and that is what's happening for this Liberty Ball Club. Yeah, they have one. Salter with a 43-yard touchdown up the middle of the quarterback, and now Day Day Hunter goes 44 yards for the score. They're going for two here to try to make it a three-point lead. Salter in motion goes Douglas. Hunter's in the backfield. The pass to Douglas. He's got it. Two-point conversion counted. And Liberty goes on top, 23 to 20. So how does nobody go with Douglas on that play? But once again, watch the offensive line. They get up, they cover up those second-level defenders, and if we even, I'm leaving. And he With insurance from auto owners, you can relax knowing we got you covered. That's simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. I should do this for a living. You said no blitz. You said no blitz. Back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. Start playing and never stop playing. You get the most from the game when you're having fun. You see that? That's when I realized we can't let another year go by. I think we're good. Okay, let's go. Um, you know where's the wrapping paper? I need to wrap something for Grandma. Um, yeah. Ready? Yeah. This is the plan to finally connect with our family's heritage. Start your plan today with a Northwestern Mutual Financial Advisor and spend your life living. We love going to games, but good seats get pricey. So we use game time. Game time checks ticket prices in real time and find you all the best last minute deals. We got our seats 20 minutes ago for 60% off. Last minute tickets at the best price in seconds. Download Game Time now. Auto owners, insures your car. Because sometimes something from out of left field Whoa. can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. Hi, folks. Medicare Part C plans with extra benefits like getting money added back to your Social Security check may now be available to you in your zip code. Make sure you're not missing out. It's simple. One, call the number on your screen. Two, they'll look up your zip code and see if you're eligible. Three, they'll check for plans with extra benefits like prescriptions, dental coverage, and the benefit that adds money back to your Social Security check every single month. Call now. I called to get everything I deserve. I called to check my zip code for a plan with a benefit that adds money back to my Social Security check. I called to check my zip code. Millions of people have called the Medicare Coverage Helpline. Call. 
Check your zip code, see if you're eligible, and get what you deserve. Call now. Call 1-800-617-3964. That's 1-800-617-3964 now. Flames are now heating up as Caden Salter on the left at a 43-yard touchdown run. The quarterback, Day-Day Hunter on the right, a 44-yard touchdown run. And, and they are just killing it here. The last three drives, field goal, touchdown, touchdown. If they had, like, one burner going on that six-burner gas grill in the first half, they got all <laughs> six uh, up now and running here in this second half. They've got the lead by three forced. Well, they're not intimidated by this Wake Forest ball club, and they feel like they can beat them, you know, running straight at them. You know, no frills, no trick plays. They're going right at them. And what about tonight? Number five, Clemson in action right after us here on the ACC Network. In our ACC primetime matchup versus Louisiana Tech. And this is a position that I don't think the Wake Forest team thought they would ever be in this evening behind in the third quarter, especially how they went in at halftime. You know, they had all the momentum and they were getting the ball coming out after the half. Well, and that's why I said when they started the ball with the second half, and now in trouble. And now the Liberty defense trying to tee off. They're fired up as they get on Justice Ellison, who took the handoff. That's why it was important on that opening drive of the second half. Week four scores at the end of the first half. They get it back. They got a chance to go up potentially by 20, and they turn it right back to Liberty, and now Liberty scored three in a row. But right now, this offensive line is disoriented. They're not blocking up front. They're not giving Hartman time. He doesn't have time to do anything, and they are on top of it. It's almost like they know exactly what Wake is doing every single play. You just saw the yards this quarter. The disparity is unreal, and this one is a loss on the catch. And what about Mike Smith, Jr.? In it on Ellison that time. And they get third down and 15. Hartman with a little more time here, but nobody's open. He's got to get to the 35-yard line. He stretches. Where do they mark it? Short, the 34. And you see Hartman reaching, trying to get that ball past the sticks. But once again, he has nowhere to go with the football. They rush five. They sit, keep six back in coverage. He has nowhere to go with the football. Now, I think this is a dangerous play because they have not stopped this Liberty offense in the second half. No. Uh, this is risky, no doubt. From the 34, it is fourth down for Wake Forest. Going for it, Hartman, and the pass is batted down. Darrell Johnson. And the offensive line, once again, have let their quarterback down. They're getting pressure by the front three, the interior. The guards and the center have to be stout at the point of attack. They've got to pick it up, put it down, and punch, and give him somewhere to step up into the pocket and step into his throws as the tackles have to keep the width. Now, look, he's getting pressure coming right towards him. Boom, boom, there's nowhere for him to go. And when he tries to throw the football, all they've got to do is get their hands up. And we've seen that throughout this afternoon. We have. Offensive line coaches teach offensive linemen when a defender puts his hands up to take a two-hand gut punch and make them bring those hands down. You yeah. do it once, they won't stick their hands back up there. But we haven't seen it, and you see the result. It's a great point for us. They have not done it because there have been a lot of batted balls. And now Salter looks for Douglas. And just over his outstretched arms, almost. Deshaun Jones is in on coverage. Number 10, we talked about it. The redshirt freshman in for the injured Kalen Carson. And they are getting what they want on the outside, man. Coverage, he just put a little bit too much on that football. I mean, that's going to be talked about to go for it on your own 34-yard line. Like you said, when the defense of Liberty has been stopping you, you've had three and outs. It's not, it seemed like a desperation it's a call panic there. Play. Yeah, it's a panic, panic play. play. And what you're telling your team is you don't believe in that. And here's the thing. As the handoff goes to Hunter, it's going to be third and long for Liberty. The Wake Forest defense, now prior to this quarter anyway, has played really, really well. So that you're saying, I don't trust my defense now. Hey, you had to punt them. You could have backed them up. I mean, that's the sense I got, no? Well, when you look, look at both scores that Liberty's had the last two touchdowns. They've been running plays up the gut of that defense. So if I'm the coach, I'm challenging my defense on the sideline, and I'm telling them, you know, we're going to punt the ball. You need to go out there and show me that you can stop the run. Liberty is one for nine on third down. If you can believe that with a three-point lead here midway through the third. 
Douglas in motion. Salter steps up in the pocket. Cannot get away. And that was Dion Bergen Jr. 95 that made the play for Wake Forest to stop what could have been another monster run up the middle. And if Bergen Jr. doesn't get off that block and slow down Salter, he has nothing but yardage in front of him. Watch on this play. He doesn't see what he likes, and he's getting up the field. If Bergen Jr. doesn't get off that block right there, there's nobody else in front of him for at least 20 yards. You're right. He just got on Salter that time, and now we're going to have a 53-yard field goal attempt for Nick Brown. He's got the leg for it. The kick is no good. And I almost go for it if I'm Liberty as opposed to trying to field goal kick on that play. You've got a three-point lead. Your defense seems to be doing a really good job. And, you know, if yeah. you miss, you give them basically the same field position if you don't convert the fourth down. But to put that type of pressure on your kicker, <laughs> I mean, that's the second 50-yard attempt we've had this afternoon. Exactly. I mean, here's the thing. Coming in, if you knew you had a guy, and this is no knock on Nick Brown, but we were told coming in that they weren't too confident, really, with him, and this was going to be a test game for him, that if he didn't really do well, you never know. We might go with a backup. He was two for two coming in. He's missed a couple of mid-30-yard range field goals. Why are you trying 53 and 54 yarders today? Hartman's in trouble, and he's going to be brought down after he goes a couple yards up to the 39-yard line. And, and, and what you see, once again, you saw the mesh play. It wasn't as active as it usually is. He took two steps forward, but once again, you're going towards the defender. He tried to climb the pocket, but you were so up, so far up, close to the line of scrimmage, he had nowhere to go. Hand off here now. And this is Quinton Cooley, and he has a first down in the Liberty Territory. I haven't seen him yet today. First opportunity for the sophomore to Bailey, North Carolina. There is a flag down as well, back inside the 40. And Hartman's body language isn't good. It looks like it may be a holding penalty. Holding, offense, number 55, 10-yard penalty, second down. That's tough. That's on Jurgens, the center, after a big gain that time from Cooley. And you see number 55 in the middle of the field. Right there, he's holding, holding, holding. Now he's trying, he's trying to get up to the second level. No, you got to let him go. You cannot hold on to the defensive lineman and take him down. I think if he would have just took his hands off mm -hmm. of him when he was going down, they would not have called it. So instead, it's now second down and 16. More flags come in. And again, false, false start, start indication. Offense, number 55, five-yard penalty, second down. It's kind of come in uh, waves today for certain players, right? Uh, Holmes had the uh, holding and the uh, pass interference call back to back. Uh, Jerkins gets the holding and the false start back to back. That's tough. The offensive line has just looked unsettled all afternoon. And this is a veteran offensive line that we expected to see big play from. Well, they didn't expect to be in this position either. Hartman takes a shot deep over the middle, and it's going to be picked off. Robert Rahimi has it. Liberty with the interception. They wanted Blake Whitehart. And Rahimi tracked that football. He saw it the entire time. And he did a great job of reversing field and tracking that football. Hartman never saw him on the other side of the field. They call him Rocket. Rocket Rahimi on the interception, the safety. You see him at the bottom of your screen. Now you see him tracking the football, tracking, 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 and he goes up and makes a play on it. A great job by him watching the quarterback's eyes because the defensive back was beat on that play, but he did a good job of tracking and helping his guy out. Second interception thrown by Hartman today. Salter again continues to work up that middle of the field and he gets five yards up to the 40 yard line. And you see momentum has just left yes. this Wake Forest sideline. You see the fan base kind of sitting here in awe trying to figure out what's going on right now. And you see a Liberty Ball Club that's continuing to believe that we not only can compete, but we can win this football game. Zero first downs in the third quarter for Wake Forest offense. And meanwhile, Salter and his group have gone to work here with a field goal and two long touchdown runs by him and Hunter. Again, Salter uh, directing traffic, looking for a block, and gets close to the first down. Chalen Garns runs him out of bounds, and he will be a yard shy here on third down. 
And Garns did a good job on that play, playing his keys and not allowing his eyes to dictate what he does because you saw the tackle pull. So they gave pull action. So you're thinking it's going to be a play going around the left side of the formation, but he stayed at home and he did a good job of getting Salter out of bounds. 280 total yards now for Liberty, 218 for Wake Forest. Big third and one here at their own 44. The handoff, Hunter has it. But the football, and they're going to pick it back up, or they'll say he was down. It was recovered anyway by C.J. Yarbrough. Couldn't you see that one going for another big one, too? Well, look at Forrest. the offensive line. Look at him firing off the football. You see him getting up the field. You get him covering up second-level defenders. You've got receivers outside blocking. And right there, a good job by the receiver, Yarborough, to react to the fumble and get on top of it. Yeah, he actually ran into Yarborough, and that's why he did fumble. But and thankfully, Yarborough did pick it back up. And if he doesn't run into Yarborough, he's still running right that's now. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Fresh set of downs for Liberty at the Wake Forest 49-yard line. Salter, look out, blitz coming off the edge. The pass is caught by Hunter, and they're on top of it. He's going to lose a yard in the play. Chase Jones and Jamal Martin combined for the tackle for Wake. The cast on the right hand there for Martin. Four wide receivers set here on a second down and 11. The pitch gets out to Hunter. Oh, and he's dropped. What a big tackle made by Malik Mustafa. Heads up. It's almost like Mustafa said, okay, I've had enough of this. I'm going to go up and I'm going to make a play, and that's what you do. You, and a good job by the defense not allowing Hunter to plant that foot and get north and south. They kept him east and west, which allowed pursuit to get to him. And what a textbook picture-perfect tackle, too. You know, we've seen a lot over the years now with the new rules and the targeting and all that. That was just perfect the way Absolutely. he did that. Absolutely. Lead with your shoulder, dip and lift, and take him out of bounds. All right, third down and 11 here. Trayon Sibley is in the slot at the bottom. Salter looking back left, running, needs 11 yards here for the first. Not going to be able to get it here. And a good job by Wake Forest converging. Garns and company on the tackle. Fourth down, and Liberty will punt. And a good job by the Wake Forest back end defenders not to react to what Salter was doing, but stay on top of your receivers. When it's a jailbreak play like that, that's when you give up big plays mm -hmm. because you don't pay attention to the receiver. So a good job staying on the receiver, not allowing them to get on top of them. Taylor Moran is back to return the punt here. Fair catch. Has it at the 12-yard line. Tonight, after Louisiana Tech Clemson, the huddle, the entire crew with a complete wrap up of that game and the whole day, highlights, analysis, interviews, players and coaches, all that and more. They got it all covered, and it's coming up right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app after tonight's Louisiana Tech Clemson game. What did you get the uh, notification of the uh, last second win by App State today? Game day was there. What an, oh my gosh. The emotion in Boone right, right now. I mean, I know. Right. <laughs> They are having a ball right now in Boone, North Carolina. Hartman. And the throw, the catch is made, a short pickup made by Marin. Now Hartman is now five of nine, but for just 13 yards here in the third quarter. And you know, what was interesting, when we talked to Coach Claus, he said, for us, you know, we can't just show up and expect to win, even though we're playing well. Right. But it seems like that is what's happened this afternoon. This catch is made on the sideline. Hauling it in is Jamal Banks, shy of the first. You see to the outside, the receiver does a good job of pressing the defensive back and coming back to the football. You've got to help your quarterback. Third and a yard with this third quarter winding down, coming up on a minute to play. They're at their own 20.
Cooley's in the backfield for Wake Forest, and a sneak from Hartman, and he has it. Tom Brady style, picking up four yards there on that one. Great play call. You see Hartman kind of looking around like he's making play, you know, making an adjustment with the formation, and Injury you catch the out. defense off guard. Offensive lineman is injured on the play. And that is Sean McGinn. And as an offensive lineman, one of the things that you fear the most is being rolled up on from the backside. Sean McGinn, preseason second team all ACC selection. 35th start here today in his 37th career game. He's been a staple of the left guard spots. Also played a couple at center as well. You've talked about how great that old line has been and you know here's the schedule coming up for wake forest right i mean they've got clemson right here at home next week have it for you on abc i mean i, I don't know i know you've said it a few times looking ahead I, I don't know i think liberty is just really they're a tough out i mean they're a tough out here today the way they've come on and changed their mojo in the second half well what liberty has shown is there are some things that wake forest needs to fix in the middle of that defense the middle interior of that defensive line and those linebackers they've got to do a better job of flowing downhill when they're getting attacked in the middle of that offensive line and defensive line so mcginn comes out at least walking off, that's good to see. But Nick Sharp is going to replace him, the redshirt freshman, number 70, and he's going to be at the left guard spot here. You got a first down after the Hartman sneak, and we're under a minute to go here in the third. Hartman, look out. Pressure, he's going to be sacked. Didn't see it coming. Ahmad Walker, and now a flag comes in at the end. There's been a lot of flags here today. Here's Adam Savoy. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's tough, right? Forrest, you get the sack, and then you do that. Well, you've got to keep your composure. You made a big play. You're putting the pressure on a weight ball club. Yeah, why, yeah, why, why you, would you do you that? Can't. There's no reason for that, Walker. Yep. You're hurting your ball club right there. Turn around and walk away. You made the play. Now move on to the next play. Now, Hugh Freeze, uh, I'm sure, is asking the officials, say, well, he, he wasn't down. Uh, that's his argument there that you know, he had to do that to kind of get him to the ground. But I think the play was obviously blown dead on the sack first, and then he threw him down as A.T. Perry makes a sketch. And I get it. It's football. Uh, you know, you've got to make sure the player's down because we've seen offensive players uh, that look like they were down, put right. their hand down, spin out of it, and make a big play. So I get it. But at the same time, You've got to be weary when you hear the whistle stop. Well, especially when it's the quarterback, that's for sure. Here's Cooley on the carry, gets up close to midfield. He's got a first down run. Mike Smith Jr. makes the tackle for Liberty. Cooley got up a little gimpy. Yeah, that's the end and of the he's going to go quarter. down, and that's the end of the third quarter. Now he's going to kind of hobble off, or at least try to receive A.T. Perry. And it'll be second down. And once again, you've got a Liberty Ball Club that's able to get pressure with four pass rushers. They're dropping seven back into coverage. Hartman has nowhere to go with the football, so he's holding it longer, and that's allowing the pressure to get to him. Play fake. Over the middle. The pass is batted down. He wanted... Morin, and all of a sudden this Liberty defense, nice defensive play to knock it away. But you had Morin and Perry converging on each other. You have to wonder, was somebody running the wrong route? Because they almost were getting ready to run into each other. They're coming right towards each other. Jawan Treadwell was there for the Flames, and now it's third and ten for Wake Forest at their own 49. Hartman stands tall. Catch is made, and inside of the 45-yard line, but still shy of the first down is Perry as Rahimi makes the tackle. It's going to be fourth and two. And if I'm awake, I'm lining up and running that quarterback sneak once again. They got four yards on it the last time, and instead, though, 
Hartman is going from the shotgun. Fourth down, Wake Forest. Turner picks up a block. The pass of Hartman is caught, and it's a first by Morin. And one of the dangers for a defense when you get all bunched up and you bring everybody down in the box, there are no third-level defenders. So you've got one-on-one -on -one coverage, man coverage on the outside. A good job by the receiver, Morin, to get past the sticks. And a nice job by Turner to pick up the block, and now he gets it on the call, and he's not going to get much. In fact, he'll lose a yard. And a tackle made by Kendi Charles. I know we've both been surprised here, at least as of late, and how much of a struggle it seems to be for this Wake Forest offense to move the ball down the field. And now Hartman is going to take a shot. The receiver stopped, and the pass is intercepted. There is a flag down, picked off for the time being by Kobe Singleton. Let's see what the call holding, is. Holding. Defense number six. 10-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Rahimi called for it, negating what would have been the third interception today by this Liberty defense. And what's interesting is the receiver, why do you stop? You've got to continue the route. It was not there. It was in the middle of the field on Rahimi. And that's why the receiver has to continue the, the yeah. route. You can't stop on the play. Hartman, outside catch made by Banks. He's got it, first down. To the 18-yard line, they're in the red zone. Turner. Flag comes in. Megan Ellison, excuse me, as he's upended by Rahimi, who's now been all over the place. Holding. Offense number 55, 10-yard penalty, first down. And that's not what you expect and you have seen throughout the career of Jurgens, and that's three penalties on him today. He's having a tough time in the middle of that offensive line. You see him right there, he's engaged, but he's got his hands outside. You've got to keep your hands in the middle of the shoulder pads. You cannot get your hands on the shoulders or on the outside of the numbers because the officials will make that call every time. Sean McGinn is back in, by the way. 79 on the left side there, the left guard. He came off in the last series. So he's back. Here's Hartman. After the penalty, sideline in. The catch incomplete. Out of bounds, Perry able to grab it. Did not get the feet in. I'd love to see that again because I was watching those two feet. He knew he tried to keep them both in while securing that ball. And if he was forced out, he would have to have come back and established being back in bounds. But he was not forced out. He stepped out and then tried to get back in bounds. And you see the left foot. But I don't Ooh. think what's interesting, I thought he stepped out prior to okay. catching the ball and the ball getting there. Now, if that was the case, you're absolutely right. The crowd is irate because they think he got that left foot in and Rolling made. The field is an but pass. if you're forced out, let's see if he's forced out. Correct. He's not forced out. Does he step out of bounds? Yes, he steps out of bounds right there. That's yeah, tough, right at the edge of our screen. But I exactly hear what you're saying for us. Be right around that seven-yard line, right? We'll come back and show it to you again. Wake Forest driving here, down by three. This is supersonic Wi-Fi from Xfinity. It's fast. So gaming with your niece has never felt more intense. Incoming! Hey, what does this button do? No, 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 don't! <laughs> Welcome to the fastest internet on the largest gig speed network. Are you crying, Uncle Ed? No! A little. Only from Xfinity. Unbeatable internet made to do anything so you can do anything. Did you or a loved one serve, live, or work at Camp Lejeune between 1953 and 1987? You may be entitled to compensation. A new bill could allow service members, families, and civilians who served, lived, or worked at Camp Lejeune to seek compensation for injuries caused by toxic water. Toxic water at Camp Lejeune has been linked to certain cancers, multiple myeloma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, leukemia, Parkinson's disease, infertility, birth injuries, and other health complications. 
Do not wait. Contact Thomas J. Henry today. This Clemson team is dangerous. What a catch! Touchdown, Clemson! Here's an important message from the Diabetes Solution Center. Diabetics understand all too well the pain of pricking your fingers. But now, by wearing a small remote device called a Continuous Glucose Monitor, or CGM, you can immediately reduce your pain. It's easy to use and helps you make more accurate diabetes treatment decisions. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn about this groundbreaking new CGM technology. And if you have Medicare, you can get a new CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. Shipping is free, and we'll even bill your insurance company for you. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn how you can get your own continuous glucose monitor or CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. Incomplete pass, and you were right, Forrest, as the player stepped out of bounds and then came back in. And I think the crowd, once they recognized that he stepped out prior, because had he not stepped out, he did, yeah, he did get that left foot in, but he stepped out of bounds prior to making that catch. Now, if he would have been forced out by the defender, all right. he would have had to have done is establish being back in bounds, and he could have caught that football. But when you step out without being forced out, you cannot be the first offensive player to touch the football. So after that incomplete pass to Perry, it is now third and 20. We have yet to see Donovan Green back in number 11. He may be banged up. He was a big factor early for this Wake Forest offense. Number 11, he's not out there right now. Moran is in the slot to the bottom of your screen. Third and 20. They are in field goal range. We'll love to have some more here. And the pass deflected. And it's incomplete. Almost picked by Treadwell, who was at the end of that play. And I thought on the third down they tried to get too much. You don't have to get it all at once. You know, get the ball to your playmakers in space and allow them to be special. But once again, Hartman has to try and find a receiver. He puts a little bit too much on the football and a great opportunity for Treadwell to make a big play on the back end of the defense. He just could not squeeze that football. Matthew Dennis with a 46-yard attempt to try to tie this game. Count it. Twenty three all here from Winston Salem. I've worked at Food Lion for almost twenty years now. Hey, Frank. Good morning, Sarah. How's the family doing? Oh, they're doing great. Most of that time was spent bringing food in. But my favorite part, sending food out. You don't know how much we appreciate this. We donate fresh food to families in need before it ever goes to waste in any of our stores. And it's a job I enjoy doing week after week. Thank you. Here to fill tables and hearts with hope. Food Lion Feeds, here for every moment. Take your favorite radio stations, the music you love, and the biggest podcasts in the world wherever you go with the free iHeartRadio app. Download it now. iHeart Podcast is the number one podcast network and is home to the biggest creators in podcasting and your favorite sports podcasts like All the Smoke, Around the NFL, The Dan Patrick Show, and many more. Listen on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you listen to podcasts. The 10th pick is in, the new All-American Club. That's a club I want to join. <sighs> Let's hear from Simone. Chuck, that's a club I want to join. <laughs> I literally just said that. I like her better than you. The new Subway series, what's your pick? Send no blitz, send no blitz. Back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. Start playing and never stop playing. You get the most from the game when you're having fun. Getting outdoors is all about the experience, the thrills, the rides, the memories. We put that in a bottle. Clean ingredients like coconut oil, activated charcoal, and shea butter. Every man Jack, naturally derived, outdoor inspired.
I don't like to spend a ton of time shopping, but I like to look good. For me, Poshmark makes that so easy. And whenever I get tired of something, I just relist it back on Poshmark. It's honestly a little addicting. Making some money I can spend, keep my wardrobe fresh. Matthew Dennis, three for three on field goals today. 33. That he just made there and <laughs> gets a little love from his teammates. Yes. They now have tied this game at 23 all. Kickers matter, man. And, yep. and people overlook kickers. I love my kicker from when I played Scott Bentley. You know, ice in his veins. You know, 18 year old on the cover of Sports Illustrated, and he has to kick a field goal to win a national championship. So you got to love your kickers, man, because they mean everything. How cool is that, right? Absolutely. absolutely. 93? Yes. FSU had a huge win for them last night. And Mike Norvell and your former team, the Seminoles, with the win at Louisville. Well, I think Coach Norvell is doing an excellent job building this team. He used the portal to get the players that he needed to do what he needed to do as far as their scheme. And you see the results. On the return, Douglas for Liberty. Tripped up as he just gets across the 20 yard line. And coming up right after us here tonight, top of the hour, Clemson hosting Louisiana Tech. We'll have it for you. Looking forward to seeing what Clemson can do here, number five in the country. And then they're coming here to Wake Forest next weekend. Tonight's game on the ACC Network, next weekend on ABC. And that's right after us here. And this outstanding Liberty Wake Forest matchup that is now tied up at 23. 12 and a half to play in the contest. Caden Salter. The give to Hunter. Next up seven. And I don't know what's going on because the Wake defenders were right there to make a tackle for the loss. There were two defenders there. But you see the ability of the runner to get skinny turn his body and get between those defenders and get positive yards. You feel like there's so many available options now for Liberty because of their confidence and what their offense has been able to do, especially from the start of the second half on. Well, it's the Salter effect. You have to account for him as a dynamic back as well as a quarterback. Give back to Hunter. Has the first forward progress has him up to the 32 yard line. The chain will move. The drive will continue. And I think one of the most impressive things that I've seen throughout this afternoon has been the offensive line play of Liberty. They have accepted the challenge. They're getting that second foot down. They're playing with the flat back. They're getting up to the second level defenders and these backs are running hard and running behind their pads. Hunter with 12 carries, 78 yards in this game here. First and 10, Liberty from the 32. Again, Hunter. And nothing doing this time. Stop for no gain. Colby Turner was there. You talk about the offensive line for Liberty. There's Big Cam Ready, the senior center. Originally a walk-on at Boston College, went to Colorado State, now his first season with the team, helping to lead that charge up front. And I think you put the offensive line at the detriment when you try and get to the outside because this is a fast wake defense and they can get up the field. You've got to hit them quick. So I like the middle runs. I don't like trying to get to the edge. Salter, pressure, hit as he throws, and he got undercut, and he gets up. He's okay. Big time hit. And if they don't get pressure, he had Sneed on the outside. He had an open receiver. When they play man coverage, Salter has places to go at the football. They flushed him out of the pocket. If he was able to throw that pass without getting it, he has Sneed open for the first down. Crowd coming alive here at Truist Field on third and 12 at Wake Forest. Liberty just two of 12 today on third down. Salter hit fumble. Recovered by Wake Forest and inside the 10 yard line, Ryan Smenda Jr. Mustafa knocked it loose. Smenda Jr. with a recovery and Wake Forest is in business. First and goal. 
And Salter's got to be able to feel that pressure. Wherever the pressure's coming from, that's where you need to go with the football because you've got a defender trying to recover. He's got to feel the pressure right there by Bathrod. If you feel that pressure, that's where you go with the football because you've got a safety coming up to try and cover up that part of the field that Bathrod left. But he doesn't, and then he does not protect the football. You've got to protect the football because you're running towards the other defenders. You've talked about Mustafa today, number three, really getting after it. A flash out there on defense. That's his second forced fumble of the season. Recovery by Smenda Jr., who's back in the lineup. He missed a game earlier with an injury, and now it's first and goal. Donovan Green is back in, top of the screen for Wake Forest. A chance to regain the lead. Hartman hands off to Turner, and he's going to be shut down for no gain. And once again, this is where I issue the challenge to the offensive line for Wake Forest. This is when you've got to get fits. This is when you've got to play with a flat back. This is when you've got to get the second foot down. This is when you've got to say, this is what we hit the sled for, and we have got to overpower this outmatched defensive line that has been beating up on us all night. Can they do it? Second and goal here from the four-yard line. Again, Turner, and he gets a yard, maybe two. Let's see what happens. You watched this game last week, so did I, and that win over Vanderbilt. Remember, they went for it, you know, with the same play on that Wildcat early in the game. They were unsuccessful. But watch, no movement at the point of attack. No movement. You see white shirts getting up the field. You see white shirts behind the line of scrimmage. I don't see movement. I don't see flat backs. I don't see guys firing off. Hartman. Third down, end zone, caught, touchdown, Banks. Jamal Banks on the three-yard touchdown from Sam Hartman, Wake Forest back in front. And they got the touchdown and a good job by Banks getting behind the receiver and Hartman waiting for him to come across. But there has to be some concern yeah. from the offensive line perspective when you can't get positive yards from the three-yard line. Extra point from Dennis is good. 30 to 23, Wake Forest now in front with 9.14 left. Well, once again, you see Hartman, he's got all the time in the world. and a good job by Banks to squeeze the football. The Sport Clips MVP haircut experience is like nothing else in the world. And now, it's better than ever. It's a perfectly steamed hot towel infused with our signature scent. A seven-point massaging shampoo. And neck and shoulder, Nirvana. Oh, yeah. The MVP haircut experience, only at Sport Clips. A big bow box says a lot about a person. Like, they have a mighty hunger, a powerful thirst, and take tailgating very seriously. Game day and beyond, grab a football-ready big bow box. We're Carvana. We've created a brand new way for you to sell your car. Go to Carvana, answer a few questions, and our techno wizardry calculates your car's value and gives you a real offer in seconds. We'll come to you, pay you on the spot, then pick up your car. That's it, at Carvana. You see that? That's when I've realized I'm ready to start my own place. Yeah, I'm really excited. All right, that sounds great. So I'm making plans for right now going back to my roots and opening my own restaurant. Start your plan today with a Northwestern Mutual Financial Advisor and spend your life living. Introducing the all-new one-wheel GT in Pint X. GT, built with more power to crush new terrain. Pint X, twice the range to take on the city. Two new boards to make everywhere epic. Get writing today at onewheel.com. Jordan Corner, Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, and a coach, Coach Mark Rick. I know this place is going to be jumping. Morning, moon, night, morning, moon, it's about to get wild. Sam Hartman. 
after the turnover was forced by the defense and the Demon Deacons capitalized. 9-14 remaining. Well, right now, if you're Liberty, you're still in this ball game. You've got to get back to what you were doing, and I think running the ball in the gut of this defense and challenging that defense to stop the run is what we need to see from this ball club. Short kick. Liberty's going to start just before their own 25-yard line as we check in with Maryland. Jamal Banks' teammates were eager to celebrate his touchdown with him as he made his way down the Wake Forest sideline. As soon as he sat down, he the only one in the wide receiver group with his helmet still on. They congratulate him, and he loudly says, it's not done. We're still going. He understands where Wake is right now. Walked over to Sam Hartman, dapped him up, and Sam said, good job. We need another. Yeah, they do, Maryland. That's a good point. I mean, you were saying it earlier, For it seems like every game they're in can come down to a possession game, and did nothing is set you know, until 60 minutes have been played. Well, the Wake Forest defense came to play that last drive. Let's see if they can continue to get pressure on Salter. Salter gets it out, and the catch is made. He's got Caleb Sneed down the sideline. First down. Finally run out, but not before he gets across the 45-yard line. A big game for the big target, the 6'3", 205-pounder out of Lynchburg. And you got to make that tackle on the outside. You cannot allow him to turn up the field. Isaiah Wingfield tried to go for the big play. No, stalk him. Slow down. Break down. Make the tackle. If you don't, force him back to where pursuit is coming from. Don't give him the outside. And that was a 24-yard pickup in the first as Douglas goes in motion, and they swing it out to him, and they got wide receivers out blocking, and Douglas slips. He's going to be blown down as the ball came out. But it is a pretty good gain to the Wake Forest 48-yard line. And you want to get that guy out of space, don't you? And look at the block on the outside by the receiver. You've got to take advantage when you've got an opportunity like that, when the receiver gives you an edge to get around the corner and be athletic and be a playmaker in the open field. That's all you can ask from your teammate is to give you the opportunity to be special and one-on-one -on -one with the defender. Second down and five, and it is Hunter, and he's going to be just shy of the first. 39-yard line, got to get to the 38. Caleb Sneed, one of the top receivers here. He's now over 2,500 receiving yards for his career after that catch a few plays ago. 25 touchdowns, his fourth active in FBS. He goes out, though, right now in this set, and it's third and a yard for Liberty from the 39. 44, excuse me. And look at how close the safeties are. To the second level defenders. Bollinger, the extra tight end in for blocking. They get it to Hunter. He's got to bump it out wide. And he is going to have it tackled down by A.J. Williams, but it is enough for a Liberty first. And you see all the defenders in the box that allowed Hunter to get to the outside without much pursuit and turn the corner. All the defenders inside the box. Now you see him bounce it to the outside. Now it's one-on-one, -on -one, and if I can get to the edge, I'm going to get the first down. And you see his ability to get to the edge and get the first down. Look at that blocking on the outside there. C.J. Yarborough going up against Gavin Holmes and a little bit of tasseling there for sure as Holmes has been targeted a ton today for Wake Forest. Now they set up the screen here for Hunter. they will pick up about three yards. In the offensive lineman, you've got to find some work. You can't get out there and not find work. Go hit somebody. If you don't see your assigned player, if you see another color, you run into that player, you have some type of collision. But too many no-hitters on that screen play. They were out there. They just didn't do anything when they got out there. Salter to the outside, incomplete, looking for Noah Frith. Let's go check in with Jordan Cornett in the studio. Just an update for those looking for Louisiana Tech and DJU's Clemson Tigers, kickoff at 8-10. You'll find that one on the digital tip, ACCNX. For right now, in a conclusion of this one, it'll then appear on ACC Network. Back to you, Micah Forrest. All right, thanks very much. We got a good one here. 606 remaining. And as you said, we'll get the Clemson right after this one is complete. Here we go. And Wingfield got away with one on that play because he never turned around to locate the football. He went through the receiver, but the officials let it go. 
Five wide receivers here. Third down for Liberty. Salter flushed out of the pocket. Directs traffic. And the pass is low and incomplete. And I think at this point, Mike, you've got to go for it. You're in Wake Forest territory. You've been able to move the ball effectively. I thought they tried to get too much on that play. Throw it short. Get yeah. it to your athletes in space. Got to go. Know, we haven't seen Day Day Hunter get the ball on this drive. And he's been very effective running and catching the ball out of the backfield. They were looking for Sibley. It would be a 56-yard attempt, so you're not going to do that. Fourth and seven here from the 39 of Wake Forest. Again, same setup, five wide, empty backfield. Salter, pressure comes in. Trying to get away from Chase Jones. He does. Throws on the run. Wide open. The catch is made by Douglas. He's got the touchdown. Get out of here. And it's the Caden Salter effect. His ability to keep the play alive. You see him go around the edge, reverse field, come back around, but he's always got his eyes down the field. And when that happens, it's a jailbreak for the receivers. There's no more route running at that point. There's finding an open space, making yourself a target for your quarterback so he has somewhere to go at the football. The defenders have to stay on the receivers, and they did not on that play. 39-yard touchdown from Salter to Demario Douglas. And we are tied once again, 30 all here in the fourth. What a game from Winston-Salem. We've got 550 remaining. Stay right where you are. Back after this, Douglas. With insurance from auto owners, you can relax knowing we got you covered. That's simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. I should do this for a living. Having trouble getting help for erectile dysfunction? Get help fast with Lemonade Health. Just answer a few questions. And they can send you medication so you can get better quickly. Visit LemonadeHealth.com today. When we started our business, we were paying like an arm and a leg for the postage. I remember setting up ship station. I think it was just like one or two clicks. Everything was up and running. I was printing out labels and <laughs> saving money. Ship station saves us so much time. It makes it really easy and seamless. Pick an order, print everything you need, slap the label onto the box and it's ready to go. Our cost for shipping like we're cut in half, just like that. ShipStation, the number one choice of online sellers. Go to shipstation.com slash TV and get two months free. Fubo TV has the most college football you can get without cable. Stream up to four games at once with MultiView. Watch your favorite teams live on all your devices. Try free at FuboTV.com. When you have auto glass damage, choose Safe Flight. We can come to you and replace your windshield. Here you go. Wow, thank you. Bye. Bye. Don't wait. Schedule now. Safe flight repair, safe flight replace. With Solo Stove Pie, pizza nights look a little different. Watch your crispy creations cook to perfection with Pie's panoramic opening. With dual fuel, you can customize your flavor profile with your choice of wood or gas and be ready to eat in just a few minutes so you can make the most out of the time you spend together and create new traditions in your own backyard. Fire up your pizza night with $10 off using promo code PIZZA10 at solostove.com. Show the world what it means to be an ACC fan at Fanatics.com. The largest assortment of officially licensed ACC fan gear anywhere. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com. Officially licensed everything. Auto owners insures your car. Because sometimes something from out of left field Whoa. can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. Game tonight, tied at 30 here with Liberty and Wake Forest. Both teams 2 0. Hartman on the left and Salter on the right. The quarterbacks we just saw, though, Mitch Griffiths warming up. Number 12, the backup quarterback for Wake Forest. Wondering what that's all about. So we'll see as the Demon Deacons are going to get this on the kick after. The 39-yard touchdown reception from Douglas in Liberty's last sequence, and here's what happened. 
Well, it all starts with the legs of Caden Salter. You see him able to get around to the outside and then he reverses field because he's got pressure in his face. But then the defender falls down Wingfield and Douglas makes himself a big target. But Wingfield trying to recover overruns the potential tackle and Douglas is able to get to the end zone. Now watch Wingfield. He gets up. Now he's over. He's trying to get there, but he overruns the tackle and Douglas is able to turn up and get the touchdown. But that's all because of Caden Salter and his ability to avoid the rush and keep his eyes downfield and find his favorite receiver wide open. Absolutely, Forrest. Good point on all of that. As Hartman is out there, everything's all right as he hands off to Ellison and he gets up close to the 30 yard line. It's a gain of five. Clock is under six minutes to go, tied at 30. And you almost feel like, Mike, whoever has the ball last is right. going to win this football yes. game. Certainly feels that. We're challenging App State for the game of the day here today, aren't we? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Second down and five, Wake Forest from their own 30. Hartman on the keeper. First down, and a flag comes flying in. Looks like it may be a hold. Holding offense number 11, 10 yard penalty, second down. They're calling out on the wide out, Donovan Green. That negates the first down run. Here it is. And you see Green to the outside right here. You've got to let him go. Yep. You've got to keep your hands inside the breastplate of the defender, and you've got to roll your hips up and duck walk. You can't try and run and bend over. You've got to roll your hips into it. It's a good call. Second down. Hartman. Deep over the middle. Looking for Williams. Inner traffic. How did he grab that? Keyshawn Williams. Look out. And number 16, Quentin Reese. The nickelback is right there. You've got to make a play on the football. You're the safety valve. You're coming over. You cannot allow him. You've got to get over there. He took a poor angle. You've got to take the correct angle to knock that ball down. What an incredible grab from Williams. That's a 41-yard pickup to the Liberty 35-yard line. And now the give to Ellison. And he's wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain, 435 in ticket. And you see what Ellison did? It's the same thing that Coach Clawson talked about going into the half. When they hand the ball off to their backs, they're doing too much dancing in the backfield. It's called tipping. That's what we call it on football terms. You tipping. Hit the hole and go. Don't sit back there and tip. They're coming up the field. Especially not right now with just over four minutes left in the game and a tie game. Hartman looking right now back to the left. He's got Williams again. Wide open inside the 20, 15. Cuts it back. And still at his feet. Finally down at the two-yard line. And saving the touchdown was Quentin Reese. First and goal coming up. And you gotta love the fact that Williams did not step out of bounds. He's trying to get to the end zone. A good job by Hartman going through his progressions. He finds his receiver wide open, and Williams does the rest. You see him right here, step and cut to the inside, and he's dragging defenders, trying to get to the end zone. That is what you're looking for from your players on the outside when they get opportunities in the open field to make a play for you. 33 yards on the pickup. Ellison is in the backfield. It is first and goal from the two-yard line. Ellison, he's got it. Touchdown, Wake Forest. And I've been waiting for that all day. Well, you know, that's what I expect. You're down in the red zone, and you've got a veteran offensive line like this Wake Forest offensive line. I need to see flatbacks and firing off the football. And we finally saw it on that play. Matthew Dennis for the extra point. Got it. 37 to 30 now with three minutes and 39 seconds remaining. Hartman is over 300 yards passing for the 14th time in his career. 324 on the day. Ellison with a touchdown run. What a fun game here today from Winston-Salem. Now watch the offensive line. You want to see flatbacks, see movement. Look at the point of attack. Look at all the black jerseys. They're going forward. They're not coming back. Too often when they've been in the red zone, we've seen them coming backwards. They're moving forward. And that's where you've got to play grown man football down yeah. in those trenches. You've got to be able to fire off, keep that flatback. And the key to all of that 
is getting that second foot down. Because when that second foot comes down and you make contact at the same time, you have leverage to yep. move forward. If that second foot is not down, you don't have any balance. And that's when you see guys going backwards because you've got defenders firing off the football. You said it. Might come down to who has it last here tonight. Three minutes and 39 seconds remaining. Liberty awaits the kickoff. They have all three of their timeouts remaining. So does Wake Forest. Demon Deacons trying to go to 3 0 here before they host Clemson next Saturday on ABC. Another short kick. They don't want to put it in the hands of Douglas. And they'll take the up man, getting it across the 30 yard line, albeit a good field position, but it limits what could be a bigger return if number three had it instead. Now, what you have to be concerned about if you're Liberty is there is a condensed playbook for Salter because they wanted to make sure he was comfortable with this offense and able to be special. Does that affect them negatively with only three minutes and 36 seconds left in the ballgame where they have to get a score to tie it to send it to overtime? Liberty from the 30-yard line here. Hunter goes in motion. Also Jerome Jackson, the tight end. Salter fakes it to Hunter on the rollout. Wide open again, Douglas. First and more across midfield to the Wake Forest 46. And once again, when you sprint Salter outside of the pocket, it allows for the receivers to go through their route, and it allows for them to make themselves a target. Salter's doing a good job of knowing where he wants to go with the football. Spotted at the 47, gain of 23. Just over three minutes remaining. Play action. Salter, pressure, has to get rid of it. And in his face was Ryan Smenda Jr., one of the captains, the senior linebacker. And one of the things that Liberty has an opportunity to do is gas the center of that defense, something that they did very effectively in the third quarter. They've gotten away from the run game a little bit. I think they have the opportunity to gas that defense because they're worried now about him with the sprint out. Second and ten. There it is again. Salter up the middle. Smelled out, though, by Deion Bergen, Jr. After just a gain of one. And he had the opportunity, but the offensive lineman did not stay engaged. You've got to get those hands in that breastplate, and you've got to duck walk those defensive linemen. Just cover them up. Salter has the athletic ability to cut off of you, but you got to duck walk them out of there. And you got to credit Bergen on those two trip-up shoestring tackles that he's made on Salter, or it could have been bigger yardage. He's done that twice tonight. Absolutely. Now the play fake here. Salter on the rollout, and a catch is made. Who else? Douglas, Demario Douglas. First down to the Wake Forest 25-yard line. And too often, receivers from Liberty are catching the football and getting yards after the catch. You can see why now people are talking about him with NFL talent as a sophomore. 22 on this pickup. He's got such great hips and quick twitch ability. Salter to the end zone. It is deflected and incomplete. He wanted Caleb Sneed. And Jamal Martin was there. Well, he had Snead on the skinny post. There was no safety help on that play. He just should have put a little bit more air under the football to allow Snead to go up and high point it. Clock is stopped at 2 minutes and 16 seconds remaining. Each team has all three of their timeouts. And the ball is out to 24. Second and 10, Liberty. JBN Lofton is in now, the wide receiver spot. But the give goes to Hunter, and he's going to be wrapped up. After a couple of yards by Rondell Bothroyd. And high and tight right now is what you're telling your running backs and your receivers when you get possession of the football. Mm -hmm. Keep that ball high and tight because the defenders are ripping at it, trying to force the fumble. We're under two minutes remaining. Third and seven. Flames. Frith and Douglas to the top of the screen. Sneed and Jackson at the bottom. Hunter is in the backfield. Salter gets it to Hunter. Trying to make a move, trying to get by Ryan Smenda Jr. He cannot. 
He's going to be well shy of the first down. The marker's at the 14-yard line. He's tackled down at the 18, and it's fourth down. And Sminda Jr. held on for life, and that's all you can ask from your defender. Hold him. Wait for Liberty. your teammates to Third get first. there. 30 seconds. And he's holding, 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 coming down, yep. doing everything that he can to prevent him from getting more positive yards. One of the best wrap-up tackles of the night. They needed that. And they force Liberty to a fourth and four. They've called the first of their three timeouts. Well, one thing you have to do when you're tackling is called you've got to thump, you've got to wrap, then you've got to tackle. So you've got to thump to let them know you're there. You've got to wrap them up, and then you've got to bring them down. Liberty beat number nine Coastal Carolina in the 2020 Cure Bowl. They're trying to beat their first-ranked opponent during the regular season here against number 19 Wake Forest. They're two for their last four against ACC competition. They beat Syracuse and Virginia Tech back in 2020. The other two games are losses by three and one point. They're right in it again here tonight. 37 to 30, Wake leads at minute 20 to go. It comes down to fourth and four for the Flames to keep the drive alive. Five wide receivers, empty backfield. Salter takes. Looking. Throwing end zone. The adjustment is made by the defender, and it is intercepted. Oh, it's caught. Touchdown, Douglas. No way. It looked like it was going to be intercepted by Wake Forest, and thought, Douglas somehow comes down with the touchdown. And I thought Mustafa, number three, had it. Is it Mustafa? Or maybe it's Winfield. One of them had the football, and it looked like Douglas just took it from him because he had the ball up high, and Douglas was able to snatch it out of his hands. Timeout. Liberty, they're second. 30 seconds. And once again, Salter extending the play, looking down the field, pointing, telling his receiver what to do. He throws it up. And you see right there, Mustafa had it, but it was knocked oh, out of his hands. Gosh. <laughs> but number eight, Sneed, and Douglas is Johnny on the spot. Watch Mustafa, number three. He's tracking the ball. He's got it. Yep. But you see Sneed knock it out of his hands, and then falls right into the cradle sack for I, Douglas I, to squeeze the football, and then he looks down. You're watching, <laughs> you're watching the play, and then I see the official put his hands up for touchdown, and you're saying to yourself, what are you talking about? And you just said it off of Sneed's head. And I like this. It's, I like this. Oh, right my, they're, they're going, going for, for two. Win. They want the win here. One this is what you to do. go. This is what you do. You're not surprised with Hugh Freeze over there. Absolutely not. He wants the win. And he's got a special play that they probably practice every practice that they've not run. Salter, hands Hunter, reverse, and now it's C.J. Yarbrough. He needs the end zone for the two. He's not going to get there. Pushed out of bounds. Ja'Cory Johns, Wake Forest holds. They hang on to the lead, 37 to 36 with a minute and 11 to go. Play your keys, play your 111, and that's exactly what happened on that play. I thought Yarbrough should have thrown the ball when he had all of that pressure coming in his face. At least you have an opportunity for a special play to be made, but there was no way he was getting to the end zone. There were too many defenders between him and trying to get the ball over the goal line. And once again, I don't like trying to get to the edge. Wake Forest is too fast. But you see, they go with the trickery. You see Yarborough right here. Now, right here, you see too many defenders. Throw it up. Try and let somebody try and make a play. They wanted to initially go back to Salter with the pass. But Wake Forest did a good job of covering Salter up so there was nowhere to go. But if you throw the ball up, you've got receivers coming from the other side of the field, probably coming across the end zone. You've got to give somebody an opportunity to make a play because there was no yep. play for him to make on that. Yep, you're right. This is unreal. First off, how did Liberty even get the touchdown? You know, <laughs> yes. caught by Douglas in one of the craziest plays. Well, at least here for this weekend, and it's unbelievable. And they even got the TD and had a chance to take the lead. Now it's not over yet. Minute and 11 seconds remaining. And one timeout remains for Liberty. So they're going to go for the onside kick here. Try to get this thing back. What a day for Douglas. Seven catches, 124 yards, and two touchdowns. 
And a great play by the Wake Forest defense on that two-point conversion. Jason Stricker. Here we go. And who's got it? I don't think it went 10 yards. But uh, it looks like a Wake player may have touched it. And there you go. If that happens, so let's see. If they touch it, that is Wake ball. Forest ball. Yes. Is that Keyshawn Williams down? Injury timeout. Yep. Let's hope Williams is okay as they attend to him. Let's recap this fourth quarter, and that's good that he's sitting up. What a crazy game this has been, Forrest. Well, it's been everything that you can imagine. You see Hartman right here. He's able to find his receiver in the back of the end zone. They gave him the time that he needed for the receiver to come across the back of the formation. And then Caden Salter keeping the play alive with his feet, something he's done all afternoon. Finding his big play receiver, Douglas, down the field. He does the rest, turning to the inside to get the touchdown. And finally, the offensive line wakes up and opens up a hole for Wake Forest to run the ball in with Ellison. And then the most amazing touchdown probably of the day right there with Douglas with the tip ball. And then the two-point conversion. They wanted to go back to Salter, but they covered it up in Yarborough. Tried to make an amazing play. He should have thrown it up, I think, to give someone an opportunity. Yeah, a little version of the Philly special there trying to make it happen. I know you said you like the call. We all understand it. Hugh Freeze, you know, he wants to go for the win. He's aggressive. Just didn't work out for him. You know, had it. You know, things would be completely different here as Liberty inspired football Liberty, here today. Third 30 seconds. Hartman and Wake Forest. They were doing what they had to do. Just enough, you felt like, in that first half. Had a 20-8 to eight advantage. But then Liberty in the third quarter. Field goal, touchdown, touchdown. Took the lead. But you got to credit this Wake Forest team. They're in these close games, right, Forest? But they know how to get over the top and win it. They're going to go to 3-0. This could be one of the best seasons in their history. That's what they're all thinking here. And they needed to get this one tonight, and they did. Well, you saw discipline on that two-point conversion attempt by Liberty. Everyone stayed at home. Everyone played their 1-11. And that's what you need to do if you're going to win big ball games. My hat off to Hugh Freeze and this Liberty Ball Club mm -hmm. because they came not only to play a game, but to win a football game. And they're going to be a tough out for anybody that has to face them. Agreed. Clock's going to wind down on this one. Hartman becomes the all-time leading passer in Wake Forest history here tonight as well. It was homecoming. A lot of people back in the area. Their first September sellout since 2006. It was a fun one to call, a fun one to watch. We hope you enjoyed it. Wake Forest 37 and Liberty 36. And then Hartman and this Wake Forest group can relax tonight. Watch Clemson, which we're going to get you to in just a few moments because they'll have the Tigers right here at Truist Field next Saturday on ABC. That's going to do it for us, for our entire crew. Jerry Monzo and stats with Woody Dan Clark, our spotter from Maryland Payne, Forrest Connolly. Mike Corey, thank you for watching. Let's go to Dave O'Brien, Tim Hasselbeck, Kelsey Riggs for Louisiana Tech Clemson. Enjoy that one. Have a great night, everyone. Man, what a finish in that.